This podcast is sponsored by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash media hole to get your free 30 day trial uh, and, you know, including one free audio book. Uh, there's over 180,000 titles to choose from, and you can stream them on your iPhone, your Android, uh, your Kindle, or any other MP3 playing device. Uh, once again, that is audibletrial.com slash media hole. Thank you very much, Audible. All right, everybody, welcome to the Media Hole Podcast. This is a weekly podcast in which me and my good friend Ian talk about movies and comics and television and video games and politics and news and shit. And we hopefully make you laugh and cry every episode. And we hopefully don't talk too much about politics. Because <laughs> normally it's fun. Now, right now it's depressing. Right now, yeah. it's Well, it's depressing, but also inspiring. Yes, it's very much inspiring. Yeah. Um, I saw, man. Yeah. Let's just get into that right now. Uh, yeah. well, as always, let's go through it real quickly. Oh, wait, do you have to read the yeah. ad? <laughs> I did it. I just did it. Oh, man. I zoned out. No, I was looking at Destiny 2's wiki, uh, I, a t- Twitter account, so I could fucking bring it up later. Yeah. So um, I've got, uh, you know, there's been a whole nother week of protests since the last time we did this. I don't think our position, uh, ACAB, good job, everybody protesting. Y'all great. Yeah. Cops are worse than ever. Yeah, Donald Trump's a big piece of shit. Who I I saw the the video of him literally walking. telling the governors to call the national guard and to just start shooting people. And we'll also like the video of him walking to the fucking church to d- hold a Bible. Yeah, and I was watching. Also, this, yeah. I don't know this for sure because I'm not too familiar with Bibles. As if I touch them, my skin starts to burn. Yeah. Um. I think it was upside down. <laughs> well, no, he but he was holding it from the bottom like he'd never held a book before. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like he's showing it off like, I own this book. Well, and it's funny because he doesn't even look that good in the video. Like, I, I'm like, oh, he this is a propaganda video. No, but I mean, like, if it was a good propaganda video where, he, you know, they just walk to that church, he holds the Bible, he walks yeah. back. Like, if it was a good propaganda video, you'd film him. He's opening the book, reading the prayer, and then, like, the people around him are happy for it. He doesn't do that. He just holds the book like he's never seen a book before, <laughs> and he fucking leaves. Yeah. And thing? he tear gassed the entire street to get that photo op, including the fucking preachers at the church. Yeah. Man, um... And the preachers were like, that is the most unchristian shit I've ever seen in my life. You he also took like a photo op with Melania oh, and yeah. he had to be like, please smile. Yeah. Because I guess, well, because her, remember her thing back in the day, like when he first got elected was she didn't like bullies, especially internet bullies. Oh yeah. And now she's married to a man who's saying, hey, just start murdering protesters. To be fair, he's always been an internet bully. Yes, he has. But she, uh, now it's like, Wow. <laughs> Not only is he an internet bully, and He's then he a became a uh, hypothetical um, racist bully. Now he's yeah. for sure. Yeah. There is no well, doubt I mean, in anyone's oh, mind that Donald Trump does not care about black people. There has never been. In Kanye, 19, where are you at? In 1978, Donald Trump got sued by the Nixon administration or whatever. It was, 73. For the, by the Nixon administration because he wouldn't let black people live in his buildings. Yeah, 1980, like, Trump, uh, there there was a thing they found out that it, whenever Trump went to visit one of his casinos, they, they had to hire, they had to hide the black staff. And then when he was aware that they worked there, what they would do is if there was a racist at the table, he's like, I don't want no filthy, you know, uh, whatever the words. Um, uh, dealing my cards, they would swap around the dealers so the old racist whites would play with white dealers. Yeah, so anyway, in case you didn't know, uh, he's always been a piece of shit. Yeah. You should have seen this coming, 30% of America that voted for him. Which is weird that you can win an election on 30% of the vote. Well, no, he he won, like, he got like 40% of the, 40 something percent of the vote. He got, le- like, you know, it's a whole thing. But it's like, the, a lot of people just didn't vote in that election. Mm. Anyway, uh, let's, you know, let's keep fighting to abolish all police. Yeah. Uh, Replace them with community things. Now defund the police. Sure. Abolishing all police, because uh, then every single guy in the world who's like, "Oh, if the police weren't around, oh, why wouldn't I just go out and rape and murder everyone?" It's like we need police because those guys are fucking psychopaths. I feel like anybody who says that, uh, judging by how they look in most of their pictures, any person could take that guy in a fight. 
I know one guy who says that, and I think I would have a very rough time taking him in a fight because okay. he used to be a bodybuilder. So he, uh, but he also indoctrinated because his dad is a cop. Okay. So he, if you grow up a different way, he might think that he might think that the world's a nightmare and the only thing stopping the gates of hell from overflowing is a cop. You know that like edgy yeah. shit they put up where it's the like, thin blue line. Uh, yeah, the thin blue line is the only thing that stops us from anarchy and chaos. And then the anarchists are like, it's That's not what anarchy means. better than this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's funny because it's like, yeah, man, what are you going to do if there's no cops? Who's going to not solve all the rapes? <laughs> who's gonna, who are you going to call when your house is being broken into? They show up an hour late and then shoot your dog. <laughs> um, no, I think there's I think there is a necessity for cops, but yeah. there's not. They don't deserve to be able to do this. Oh, certainly. Yeah. And I get that. It's like, oh, they need guns in the States because all everyone else has guns. But you know who doesn't carry guns and still does their job as shitty policemen? The UK cops. I was going to say, do you know cops are the 18th most dangerous job? You don't see loggers walking around with guns. You don't yeah. see pizza delivery guys driving around with guns. Oh, you don't okay, see nurses with I guns. Could see, or I could see them being like, yeah, we might need a gun to protect ourselves and our pizza and our like 50 bucks of cash we carry around on us. Mm -hmm. Loggers would be fucking funny. It's like <laughs> the trees falling at them and they're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> just firing bullets at like all <laughs> well like yeah being a nurse though is like extremely dangerous and they don't carry guns they just get well trained <laughs> no they <laughs> they carry guns <laughs> to shoot their patients who cough at them <laughs> I know I've already been infected but this is my revenge <laughs> that's how you do it yeah guns are bad guns bad you can own them you should only be able to own them if you go through an extreme vetting process and you do not deserve to have an automatic weapon because yeah. guess what? Why do you need it? Yeah. Uh, I was going to say like, just I was like, huh, what's the most out there thing we could say? I wonder if we could get like the FBI called on this show because I was about to say like, yeah, you shouldn't have a gun unless you're going to shoot a cop with it. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't I was have like, a gun unless we... you want to do a high profile presidential assassination. <laughs> that uh, do you ever watch that Whitest Kids You Know bit where uh, it's him telling you that it's illegal to, for me to tell you to kill the president but it's not illegal for me to make a joke on how you're going to kill the president yeah where he keeps and then he gets into like extreme detail about this time this location this point there's a blind spot you can see onto the, the onto the fucking <laughs> into the white house rose gardens from this angle if the wind is coming in this direction it's a very easy shot yeah. and he's like but that's all a joke i'm not really saying that that's funny i i kind of wanted someone to go forward like do the math and be like wow that was right that was right that's funny <laughs> because if it is, if it isn't it's like yeah that's a funny premise if it is it's psychotic yeah <laughs> that they were like we have to be realistic yeah uh oh yeah so do you want to do you want to talk about a couple really dumb funny takes to about this shit always so th all right cool. Wait, are, are they as good as the hard times tweet about real life Robocop, Robocop, this cop feels no remorse or sadness. It's close, but instead of that, which is a great thing, this is people being actively honest and just bad people. Okay. Uh, so this first one... Are there from, senators? No, there, I've got two. One is from a news source. The other is from a propaganda site. Which one's which? Uh... <laughs> The first, the first one is from a Twitter Twitter user that runs a gaming news source. He's called One Angry Gamer, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of his I posts. I know who he is. Yes, he's a piece of shit. He's the guy who's like reporting people for being like so, members of Antifa or something. On his he? little video game site, he's compiled a list of traitors to America, which is basically any YouTuber or company that shows any respect towards the Black Lives Matter movement. His Twitter bio claims, and this is where it gets eerily similar to the article. I bring you the newest gaming news without remorse. <laughs> well, hold on. Well, hold on. Why would you need remorse when reporting about gaming news? Secondly, why would you think... It's not sad that The Last of Us 2 is not gonna, looking great and that Guilty Gear Strive is delayed. You're like, yeah, Last of Us 2 looks like shit. That's not my problem. Guilty Gear Strive isn't coming out till next year. Whatever. Yeah, like, uh, what What would... How like would a, you report gaming news without remorse? Like, A, remorse is a good thing. Randy Pitchford said something racist again. 
Cool. Good for him. I yeah. love Randy Pitchford. He's my idol in the gaming industry. <laughs> anyway, uh, on this on his little list that makes him feel like a big man. Yeah. Um, he features folks like Scott the Waz, <laughs> Quentin Reviews, Internet Comment Etiquette. So again, these are traitors to America. Uh, oh, Annapurna Interactive, Amazon. Oh, that's Annapurna Interactive doesn't make great games. They do. They make like a lot of simulators, don't they? Oh no, wait. they make like kind of they they make super indie games. I gotta yeah, I think I'm mixing them up. I think there's, I think I just always think they are, but I'm talking about the I'm thinking of the city skylines. Uh, no, that's not that Yeah, uh, Arc System Works, <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077, <laughs> which like it's not called Cyber Bootlicker 2077. <laughs> Dipshit. It's Paradox Interactive is the one that they always oh, make you think like Paradox. Yeah. Uh, Devolver, Discord, Disney, and many more. <laughs> Discord and Disney next to each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just literally, it's alphabetical. Yeah. Uh, there are between companies and individuals, there's over 750 names and counting. Yeah. Uh, I'd say this guy might be dangerous, but there's so many people on his little piss baby incel school shooter list that he wouldn't know where to start. Do you think if you added him, you'd get put on it? Because you got, did you put on, got get put on some like liberal soy boy cuck list? Or yeah. Whatever? Yeah. I did get put on a liberal, a little liberal soy boy cuck list. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I, yeah, I mean, hopefully he listens to this and knows that he's a little piss baby piece of shit yeah. who should burn in hell. Also put me on your list. Yeah. I hate America. Yeah, put the media hole on the... Li- oh, yeah, same. Jesus. Yeah. My buddy actually asked me the other day, he's like, Ew, when's the next time you're going to come visit? And I was like, I don't know. Number one, you live in a police state right now. <laughs> Number two, corona is still a fucking massive issue in your country. And he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, it's great. Yeah. And also, get, get health care. Get good health care. Yeah. That's not... Get good he- no, they can't afford to do that, but they can uh, uh, make an entire fucking, like, convention center into a f- into a military base. Yeah, it's fucked up. E3 are should be happening. Are convention centers owned by... Um, are they owned by the government? Or no, are they owned they're by private company? businesses. Okay. So, fucking Third Amendment rights. Yeah. <laughs> I, get think, rid of I think so. It depends, Who's right? the guy who put that in? <laughs> the Third Amendment yeah. thing? Yeah. The guy's like... It, everyone was like, we all thought he was a joke, but look at him now. The Hilton's kicking people out of that the room. That was sick. Yeah. That's sick. That's the Hil- Hilton being dope. It's like... I don't think oh, it was the, the Hilton. It's just that's the one I keep saying. Oh, it was, maybe it was a Sheridan. or It was a hotel. Well, because I was talking to my sister, and she used to work at a Hilton, so it's just easy to say... Yeah, sure. To bring up, like, Hilton as a... Whatever hotel it was... Dope. I think because it's more like, than that. Like there was a couple of them. Yeah, because it's like, oh, the military is can't stay in there unless they're going to declare it war. So yeah, you know, it's it's we have to consent if we're the owners of the hotel. So mm-hmm. good for them for kicking them out. though. that still takes a lot of bravery. You uh, but know yeah, who you know what, you know what fucking corporate food chain sucks ass. Well, no, what? they are the most McDonald's? Deli- no. Kind of. I don't know what their response to Black Lives Matter is. Oh, they made some like little post or whatever, and then somebody was like, McDonald's literally tried to make people come back, like, uh, employs like mostly black people, pays them poverty wages, and then tried to uh, make them not get paid sickly for coronavirus. Yeah, I, well, I, I understand that they're all shitty. And at least it's, it's either, I want corporations to either say, fucking nothing for this shit, or... Put out their mees- uh, measly little fucking uh, d- text post. Yeah. Well, that's like the bare minimum I'd like them to do. Them yeah, to yeah. Do. That's the worst minimum. you could possibly do is be Chick-fil-A. Oh, well, Chick-fil-A is run by the worst people on yeah, the planet. Yeah, but the, the, the thing that sucks about Chick-fil-A is their food is straight up good. It's great, yeah. It's so good. But they're making their employees put, wear blue shirts that say, back <sighs> the blue Police lives matter shit. So guess what? I'm the one time I've had Chick Fil A in my life was really good. You guys, really I mean, they already hated gays. I like we knew this was going to happen. No, I know, but I think they when the gays thing they tried to justify and be like, well, it's a religious or no, it was like it's not the whole board that shares this view. It's like this one guy who controls most of it. It's like all right. Mm. I wonder. Great. I wonder when how 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 long until they start flavoring their chicken boot flavor. <laughs> It's a joke I already made on this podcast, but I'll do it again. 
because <laughs> it'll never stop being true. Fucking Fuck Chil- Chick-fil-A. Do you want to hear something else that's really great that yes. I just got today? Uh, so the second great uh, take on this was from Fox News. Did you see what they posted? No, but I'm not surprised. So... A, I, th- I believe from this that they're claiming that the Black Lives Matter people are former Weather Underground people, uh, which was like a whole thing. It's, it was like a, you know, big group that tried to, it was like a punk kind of thing yeah. that was like pro-black where it was like, oh, we're going to destroy property and blow shit up to protest. Like it was like a big thing. I don't know. Yeah. Pro- probably they did bad things for good reasons. Um. Seattle Police Department officers are now uh, tracking down protesters who they see the thrown shit. So wear a mask. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wear eight masks. Yeah. Be like John Mulaney. <laughs> wear two. Yeah. Uh, and goggles, uh, like, to protect yourself and, and stuff. Uh, gas masks are good. And uh, park far away or Uber or walk because they they mark cars as well. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so so Fox News posted that this is, this is the Black Lives Matter people's strategy. You ready? It's multi-part. Yeah. Uh, destroy capitalism. The weapon of choice, systemic racism and police racism. Identify the victim classes. Organize the victim classes. Engage in international solidarity with the global movement. Attack and dethrone God. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. And so today on Twitter, the day that we record this, maybe the maybe still will be on the day that this comes out, Attack and Dethrone God was trending. And everybody's talking about attacking and dethroning God because it's the coolest fucking thing on the planet. Okay. We both like uh, JRPGs. And uh, Attack and Dethrone God <laughs> speaks to me I'm so not, much. I'm not relating JRPGs to real life. It's like being a Harry Potter fan. Going, they like, did it Death first. Eater. Fox did it first when they said Attack and Dethrone God. Because I'm sorry, when I say that, what does it, does it not pop in a fucking Final Fantasy game into your brain? Because that's what you do in literally every one of those games. But obviously also we will Attack and Dethrone God in real life. Because that guy is a fucking dick. Yeah, am I right, fellas? Yeah. Just kidding. I I assume y'all know that when they when Republicans say God, they mean the Republican God, <laughs> which is either money or Donald Trump, depending on who you ask. It's money. Yeah, I mean it's both. It's it's both. I don't know why I'm trying to make a distinction. Um, but yeah, that's all my news. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, there's one take I saw that's just not particularly great for rich people i get it but they some it was these people fucking saying like i should give up all the money i have to like uh charitable funds i'm giving money but i need to be able to live within my means yeah and also you don't currently have a active like wage so like if you gave up all your savings it'd be like next month it's like cool i helped like some people get bailed out yeah but i'm fucked now yeah i mean like but, Donate what you can. Don't put yourself into a bad situation. Yeah, if, like oh, I'm. I don't see a lot of people getting like. No one's going like tracking people down who isn't tweeting yeah. about like. Ooh, I donated. Yeah. But, like, I, so Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nine Nine cast. Oh, they donated a bunch of money. Not enough. Because here's the thing. Oh well, yeah, like Brooklyn Nine Nine cast. The entirety of the cast donates a hundred thousand to bail relief fund for protesters. Andy Samberg makes one hundred twenty five k per episode. Yeah. So that's like, if I took... They do 22 a year. Okay, so let's say there's like 10 people in the cast. Yeah. Fucking, and like, there's 20, there's like 10 people in the main cast. Yeah. Andy Samberg would have been $12,000, that 100000 assuming... Assuming it's all equals. Yeah. Even Stevens. So that's like me giving like $7. Yeah. That's it's not- like it's something, but if you have so much more to give and you look li- like you're he's making you make so much money, yeah, that you can afford to give up half of your paycheck and still live well, maybe you, you should, yeah, like, like that's the uh, problem with rich people. I'll- it's yeah, like I, I mean, you know, obviously a hundred thousand uh, dollars is a lot of money, yeah, but like, yeah, between 10 people that all make quite a bit of money. 
from playing cops on TV and perpetuating Where they portray cops as being amazing good people. Yeah, like especially because they're perpetuating like copaganda. Yeah, uh, where it's like they're they're very much a not all cop show. Yeah, where like yeah, there's an episode there's where bad cops. where Terry Crews is a giant black man walking through his own neighborhood, but it's a nicer neighborhood trying to find his daughter's like toy, and yeah. a cop. Like, he's a sergeant, and a cop lower than him, like, throws his ass on the ground and tries to arrest him because he's not going to fight back because he understands what a giant black man beating up a white officer looks like. And then he goes and tell, like, talks to the guy, and the guy goes, like, gives him this half apology. It's like, yeah, that's a very big moment for a TV show about cops to reference that. But then the rest of the time, the show is just going on about like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to break the whole fucking like string of things so I can try and get this guy. Because if I'm right, then there's no repercussions. And it's like there is still repercussions. And that's part of why I didn't like that show. I think it's still a very funny show. It, I don't really. It's a sitcom. Yeah. It doesn't have to be totally real. No, I get it. Is, it. The, You're right, the, it is copaganda. But, like, that's that's the problem. Is I can't like, wait to see their ham-fisted Black Lives Matter riot episode next year. Uh, you, you know what would be a good fucking thing if you want to prove that your main characters on that show are good people? Yeah. How about if you're going to have a reaction to a Black Lives Matter plot, have all the main characters quit being cops and decide to get jobs and help people? Yeah, well, especially since the chief of police is a black guy who has gone through so much adversity. Mm-hmm. He like did, but he also that. did do like the bad, like the badder, like cop where he tried to get Terry to not push for, uh, to have that guy like fucked over. Yeah. For like abuse of power or whatever, because it's like, it'll ruin your career. And it's like, yeah, but it lets a racist walk around. And also, yeah. he's not going to, he just can't move up. But being a sergeant in the NYPD is pretty fucking good. Yeah. Also, like, it, wait, was that really what Holt decided? Like Holt, the, it's what Holt nah, recommends, but by the end of the ep, because he thinks, because he there was times in his career he says where that he could have done that, but it would have sandbagged his entire career. But that's an old man trying to help black like other black men move higher up in the organization. Yeah. So there's you can't do you can do more work by going at the bottom. So he's saying like grit your teeth, bear it, let this dickhead go. So that one day you can move up and you can have the real power where instead of you having to ask someone above you to fire or deal with this man, you can be the one who does it. Yeah, but the problem is but, how many more people is that guy going to hurt and that's before what, that, that point? Was, that's what Terry's, Terry's perspective on it was. So he went and did it and then Holt comes at the end and explains that it, that was just something he did because that's what he thought. Was that the right thing best. to do at the time, but Terry doesn't have to do that anymore because there's men like Captain Holt above him who already took the L. So, yeah. Also, like, you know, we don't have to keep talking about it, but <laughs> NYPD bad. NYPD the worst. <laughs> Next, to, uh, it's like NYPD and then LAPD. Yeah, they're like. To be fair, two of the biggest cities in the country, so of course they're going to have the most problems, yeah. but also so much. And they're also classically the cities that are very much um, separated by uh, classism. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, lots of lots of issues there. Sad. Yeah. Sad as fuck. Um, that's what we're talking about that for the rest of the thing, hopefully. So if you if you are like, you know, I'm a staunch conservative, but I love the show. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. You, you can be a conservative be. and not, f- and still think what they're doing is wrong. Yeah. And um, okay. <laughs> I just found a good Twitter account. Okay, what is it? Judy updates. <laughs> there is no police, police brutality in America. That's good. It's a good old Avatar reference. Good old Avatar reference. Yeah. So, uh, what do we got Destiny wise? All right. So Destiny Two did their first Fortnite style live event. Which, if you're not familiar, familiar with how Fortnite does their events, it's... Then how are you listening to this podcast if, if you're, you're not, not familiar a real with Fortnite? <laughs> yeah, this podcast only streams in Fortnite, but it's lobbies where people hear us talk and they just instantly leave. Yeah. Because it's a mark on your account if you play, like, the first match you play and you see it. Yeah, that's actually how I get new listeners for this show. I have a bot that logs into Fortnite and over voice chat just plays our podcast. Yeah. You will, you're, the first match I you win do, most matches, so they usually hear the whole thing. The first match you do, you see like the event that happens. Yeah. And then the next match you can just keep playing. Yeah. But so Destiny And they made that the, giant rapper man. Yeah. Uh, apparently and they he was played like, the, the trailer for that film. 
Star Wars and Tenet. Yeah, Tenet. The Star Wars one was the worst. <laughs> the Star Wars one allowed you to hear the broadcast that you only know of at the beginning of Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, it's not much, but it's still just like... The crawl. One of the, the 450 the, things that make no sense about Rise of Skywalker only makes sense if you played Fortnite on the right day. Yeah. Um, also, Deadpool's in Fortnite, and I think it's Ryan Reynolds' voice. That's cool. Okay, so uh, the event, was, there, there's actually, on the 9th, I believe, they are announcing their first, uh, their next expansion. Cool. Because they keep saying, they put out a little teaser trailer. It's going to focus. I think they're finally going to do the fucking Civil War shit they were fo- focusing on. Cool. Back like when this character didn't... Have they, have they explained what the Destiny ships do? The ships? The the planet, the circle. The ta- the, oh, the, the Traveler? Yeah. It gave them the power. Because they were always like, oh, what's the Traveler? Oh, it gives this stuff. It does these things. And you're like, okay, like where to come from? What is it? And it's like, it's a mystery. And I'm like, okay, am I going to figure out what it actually does in this game? And it's like, no, you won't. So did we ever find out where it came from or what it is? No. Okay. It is a being. It is a sentient Here's god-like a, being who goes to planets and like raises them up. It's but, evil. That's they're going to reveal it's evil. It is not because there is already a dark. There is uh, the uh, the traveler is a giant ominous circle who grants you gifts. There is also the giant ominous triangle who is chasing down the traveler who destroys planets. So it's Galactus versus Anti Galactus. Yes, but you're with Anti Galactus is the your your nice friend. But the so the traveler has that's so weird because it feels like a setup for like oh it gives us all these gifts and it's hovering over our planet ominously like you're like oh sick oh I guess it's good and then like you the obvious and probably more interesting choice in my opinion would be that it's like fucking up the planet or like it's going to make the planet die sooner actually it makes planets habitable for humans yeah yeah i mean i mean like yeah but it's like you know you know it just feels kind of like a weird way to do with this story yeah um seems like maybe they didn't really know before they wrote it or before the game came out and well they're not bungie's not the best writers in the world like they have a lot of issues they have there's like a bunch of lore they always like hint at and then never do anything with I hate that shit. Like, if you're gonna if you're gonna have lore shit, uh, like obviously you want to just give your world some color, but like also it needs to tie in. Yeah. Uh, so the traveler it shows up to it showed up to Earth. Oh, I remember it was in, the lore for the first Destiny was on a website. Yeah, like, he, it wasn't even know. in the video game. The, it, I just remember that. I'm sorry, I don't mean to keep cutting you off. So the traveler shows up to Earth. Earth was getting kind of fucked by uh by invaders at this point. Yeah, they're like specifically there's the this covenant. One. Yeah, no, th- uh, that's the fallen, which they don't they didn't show up till after the traveler came. Mm. Um, it was the. Are you proud of me? I remember the halo. Yes, thank you. The they're also they both worship giant uh machine planet gods. The covenant worship the halo rings, where um the uh the fallen worship the traveler. But the thing is, is the uh the traveler is a sen- like it's. It's sentient. It chooses when to leave. It doesn't really care about you. It like gives you gifts to like help you out for no reason. But then it will just it gives you gifts so that you can fight the minions of the dark. Yeah. So what they did, it shows up to Earth once again. I'm gonna fucking finish this point now. Yeah. Because <laughs> I keep cutting myself. I'm so off. sorry. <laughs> no, it's me. Um, they, he it shows up to Earth and it's like, damn, bro, y'all only live like eighty years. Here's 500. <laughs> so then Guardians are created where like, do you know the little ghosts? Yeah. Your friend that was originally voiced by Peter Denklage? Yes. They show up and they bring you back to life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens and at the beginning of the first it one. It also grants you your powers. But you don't uh-huh. need the ghost to use your powers. It's like the ghost allow, like helps you use them. Okay. And also gives you the ability to heal damage. And really, they don't... It, okay, so the extending human life thing that the traveler does yeah they really never pull off like they they really never twist it like the traveler gave us 500 years instead of the 80 that we normally live that's great and then it's like we don't ever learn the lesson that maybe humans shouldn't live that long no there was the dark ages and humans when they did because the by studying the traveler they went through giant uh like um societal like 
they raised themselves up super fast, but too fast, and then the Dark Ages came. Where it's no literally one, just the Tower of Babylon. Yeah, no one knows how it happened or what happened during them. It's just that civilization, despite the fact that we were super powered, got destroyed during the Dark Ages, and then there was a, and then that's also when the Fallen came to Earth. And the Fallen, they're called the Fallen because they used to be chosen by the Traveler. Oh, but they're they, like an angry ex. But yeah, instead of instead of like working on themselves and their society by becoming, uh, like, you know, by getting better. Yeah. By using their powers and their new intellect and their extended lifespans to fucking raise up, like make everything better. They made an entire religion surrounding the orbs, started to make machine uh, modifications to themselves. Because you'll see a lot of Fallen have four arms. Mm-hmm. Two of them are robot arms. Okay. And like they are half robot people and they worship like smaller machine gods. Cool. That they created themselves. But so they're all, but then one day their traveler starts to leave and they did their best to try and stop it. And the traveler reacted like, hey man, fuck you (laughs) and fought back. And they, uh, that's why they're so fucked up now. Is then that's their, they hate humanity because humanity is the last, because the traveler is dead. Oh. It hovers over top of the earth now. It, but it's not, it won't it tried to leave but it was actually killed by the uh by the darkness i think okay or it's recovering like it can't and move. so then who is performing in destiny what do you mean like you said they're doing a live performance thing oh the, no they didn't do anything it's just that they destroyed this ship called the almighty which was on a path to try and destroy the traveler Oh, so it was like literally just... I thought it was like when the guy did the rapping. No, no. That would be kind of interesting, but... Yeah. Because uh, they were kind of... they Well, they've been talking about destroying a planet for a while. Yeah. I thought this could have been it. Like, hey, everyone go to Mercury, and then you all get destroyed, and you end up on your ships outside of Mercury or whatever. Yeah, because they're still doing that, aren't they? Yeah, but that'll probably be what happens with the next um, expansion. Update. Yeah. So, cool. I actually do have some other pieces of news, actually. Yeah, I but remember. the new expansion, uh, it looks like it's... There's this guy that they brought in like six seasons ago called The Drifter, and he gets a little piece of lore all the time. He used to be a guardian like you. Until he took an arrow on the knee. No, he became like... he's He kind of... As a guardian, you can live with the dark. It's like becoming like a dark Jedi. Yeah. Where like you still have your abilities, it's just you're kind of don't live the right way. Like, there's this gun called uh, Luma, Lumina. Mm-hmm. And it's this gun that's like, when by getting kills on enemies, you drop healing orbs and it helps your allies. But then the guy who wielded it became, like, evil and hid this dark energy went into it and it became the thorn. Okay. And whenever you shoot people with the thorn, it does, like, poison damage. But it, like, Destiny has all this lore, but not a lot of it connects. And now they're trying to make some of it connect. Uh... <laughs> That's funny. There was also a whole thing about like humans. You you know you're thinking about like maybe they shouldn't have lived that long. You're yeah. right because the first guardians were the lords and the lords were fucking Nazis. <laughs> oh, who were like we people with the power to protect deserve to be worshipped as gods. So we're going to create these cities where we corral in all of the non guardians and force them to work for us. And, like, they were nightmare slaver people. See, I meant maybe humans shouldn't live that long because, like, then the next generation of humans, like, essentially will live two, three hundred years of, like, an extended... Uh, yeah, but children aren't really born in this universe. Oh, okay. So Then also, um, and have, also you ever, have you heard of, heard of the movie um, The Man from Earth? No. Okay, it's a movie... Okay, you know... <laughs> Okay, you know the, the DC Comics character of Vandal Savage? Yes. Okay. The caveman so, who slept next to a meteor and got an infinite life and super so strength. The movie The Man from Earth is basically a Vandal Savage movie where it's like these people know this guy who's like kind of like an older guy, and then they like they go to his house and it's mostly just talking. Is Vandal it, Savage strong enough to beat up Superman? Uh no and no. No, no. So he's just a really smart guy who. He's like, just a guy. Like, like he could beat the fuck out of Batman. Uh yeah. It depends on who's riding him. Oh yeah, no one can beat up Batman. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the frustrating. Okay, let's thing pit about some Batman. villains against each other then. Could right, he beat yeah. up Bane? Oh yeah, Vandal Savage could kick anybody's ass because Vandal Savage needs to be a, a big enough threat that Wonder he's Woman. a Justice League threat. 
Yeah, the Justice mean, League means that you need more than one person, so I'm saying one-on-one battles. Could Wonder Woman handle him? Excuse me. No, what I mean is, like, Vandal Savage is a character written so that, like... And because he's he's very smart and very strong and very, like, whatever, like, well-adapted... Well-educated. Well-educated as well. well. It's kind of easy to be well-educated when yeah. you lived through yeah, education. Yeah, through all of it. Um, but, like, it's the idea is... You know, we just know Vandal Savage, so here he's just so good that it he needs all the Justice League to show up. I don't he needs understand. all seven to show up. He would uh, he would beat all of them one on one. If Vandal Savage is a superhuman, yeah, he's a meta human. Why didn't he just take over the human race when they were stupid? He did. Why did he lose power? Well, because he didn't. He could just be the Pope. He didn't. He was there. But the problem is, people would know he doesn't age or die. Yeah. So, like, he can't be that public. But if he was that public, it would just be a normal facet of our lives where it's like, hey, who's the king of the world? Vandal Savage? You ever notice that that man, uh, like, if you look at him from a picture of, like, your great, great, great grandfather's time, he looks the same? It's like, yeah, that's because he, that's why he's the king of the world, because he gets to live forever. <laughs> Yeah, I and his mean, whole thing was absolute that has control logic. of community. That has logic, too, but it's more like he it's, was always in the background. It's more interesting for him to be a man leading the world from the shadows than yeah. a guy who's just like, well, cause I've been the king forever. Because it's the year tired, 2020. We would all know in the DC Comics timeline, we would all know that if there was a king of the world that everybody knew, we would all know that. Yeah, and then also the, he would Superman would be deemed as an active threat instead yeah. of a savior from another planet. Yeah, because Vandal Savage would look at it as like, oh man, that guy could kick my ass and become <laughs> king by force, and he might be a nicer dude than me. Well, he is a nicer dude than he's me. He's a much better man. <laughs> so fuck, I Kill guess him. I'm gonna have to turn the entire world against him, and then the Justice League becomes the Injustice, the Injustice Gang. League. <laughs> The Injustice Gang, an actual team from the comics. Or the Injustice League from Harley Quinn Season 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was watching that. I watched that bit before I fall asleep. The first couple night. laps? No, just the first because I passed out in the middle oh, yeah. of it. And then I finished it today. Nice. Man, they are... That show... Is fucking great. I think I think they have a... San, I think those guys know how much they're going to write of it or how many seasons they're going to get because they are fine with killing off major characters. Yep. Just not main cast major characters yep. like they killed the penguin in this first episode of the season two yeah they killed the scarecrow yeah i also liked how she killed she bit off his nose like he did in that fucking yeah. one a tim burton batman movie yep my beautiful nose there's a great <laughs> there's a great episode of part way through season two i think i already told you about it but where it opens with Is it like about mr freeze no well no i told you about that one because I don't know, I just remember you telling me how funny Mr. Freeze is. He's and great because he's just like this like deadpan guy who does yeah. like stupid things, despite the fact that like he's a super genius. It's like we all need organized crime, and Mr. Freeze is like, I don't do organized crime. I'm just trying to save my dying wife from her incurable disease. And they're like, and how do you fund this venture? Organized crime. Continue. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there's a, no, there's a great episode midway through which is about. Uh, like Batman and it's also about Barbara Gordon becoming Batgirl uh, is Barbara Gordon's mom also named Barbara Gordon yes okay because that I got I forgot it's about such that. a weird choice yeah it, it's true in the comics because it's like well is his is their son named Jim Jim yeah James Jr. yeah okay so I guess they're just like that family where instead of you know being creative and making a whole new person with a different name yeah. and then giving them your giving you you them like your middle name is your dad's name if you're like the firstborn. Yeah. Which is what it's like in my family, at least. Like my brother's middle name is starts with a B because that's what my dad starts with. Uh, so Yeah, my um my middle name is my dad's full name, but he never goes by that. My middle name is unrelated <laughs> because I am the second like born the- son, also the youngest child of four. Yeah. <laughs> my oldest sister has my mom's name as well. Yeah. But yeah, if, uh, you're, but anyway. if you if you if your child if in the year 2020 and you have a child and you're not already the third or the fourth, don't start a second now. <laughs> like Alpha Rad, he's a fourth. Yeah, he's he's the he's Jacob the fourth. So oh. if he has a kid, his like his kid should be Jacob the fifth. I wouldn't. I'd call my kid fucking. I don't know something stupid. I couldn't think of something on the Sasuke. spot. <laughs> 
Yeah. Sasuke Mick Irish name. Yeah. Um, what was I in the middle of saying? You can, you I don't can know, Harley kid, Quinn. You oh. can name your kid Sasuke, I'll name my kid Naruto, and then we'll both be upset because I don't think either of us want children. Yeah. Also, I hate Naruto, the show. <laughs> yeah, so you, your kid's name is Sasuke and he's going to bully my kid. <laughs> All right, I'm in. <laughs> I'll die the day he's born. You got to die five years later because yeah. you went to a all cops or bastards rally and you got killed by the government. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna train my kid to just hate, not even like hate specifically, just hate anime, just hate, <laughs> just yeah, hate anime too. Oh my god, yeah. I'm and a- then you're gonna make your kid a super weeb, and then that's and then my kid's gonna beat the shit out of your kid. <laughs> yeah, if I ever was stupid enough to have a kid, I would make sure that he doesn't trust cops, just in case he has a black friend, doesn't have to fucking yell, and be like, "What do you mean you guys don't trust cops?" Because that would be the worst. Is yeah. accidentally creating a child who's just like, "Yeah, cops are nice people. They're here to protect us." And it's don't like, let your kids watch Paw Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid, burn the burn the traitor among us or whatever the fuck that was yesterday that I that I found. <laughs> uh, anyway, fuck and Harley Quinn. Yeah. Um, the episode with with Barbara Gordon and Batman is really good, uh, and it opens with like two guys are sitting on the couch and they're like, fucking. Oh, uh, well, what do you want to watch? I don't know. What's on this or whatever? It's like two nerds. One's wearing a release the Snyder Cut shirt. Another one's wearing a shirt that says the Last Jedi. It is, isn't canon. Um, <laughs> and it's like, uh, fucking. What do you want to watch? Oh, well, how about Harley Quinn? Oh, that shows all SJW pandering. It's fucking bullshit. It's so all wait, feminazi. Was it two real guys or were they animated? It's animated still. Okay. Does it exist within the show or is it like supposed to be two guys watching the show? It's two guys watching the show. Okay. Because that they would be t- fucking they funny. Hit, if they then they like- start the episode on the TV and it plays the intro. Yeah. But they read the the line and it's like... It's like in this episode, Batman has to come back from being gone and he's broken and he needs to try to get back together. Harley Quinn and her friends don't appear in this one. All right, fine, I'll watch it. (laughs) And then at the end of the episode, it's like, yeah, that was good. I'll watch another one. Oh, it's not out till next week. This fucking streaming model sucks. (laughs) I appreciate the weekly streaming model. Yeah. I hate it when Netflix tries to do with anime because they always fuck it up well it's always like it's been out in japan for three months yeah fucking i uh i brand new animal i don't even think it's on netflix yet here which is trigger's newer show yeah but like the day it came out in japan i was able to acquire it by other means yeah i still haven't watched it though (laughs) i want to because the the tanuki girl look real cute and yeah and i want to watch that um japan sinks 2020 or tokyo sinks 2020 masaki yuasa it's either a movie or tv show it's the one that's just about to come out i was i was trying to talk to you about that last night and you kept cutting me off (laughs) oh yeah i was fucking drunk yeah well the uh, hey man i wasn't judging i was just saying we had a totally legal pool party yesterday yeah it was only a handful of us yeah uh literally the max amount um and i got well i started drinking as soon as i had blake over so we got real drunk my hands are fucking destroyed just from don't stay in a pool too long kids you're right <laughs> when your fingers start to prune get out because yeah. guess what that actually means that it'll break the skin yeah i have like little fucking irritated cuts all over my hands oh that's gross and i had to go and put together a um a fucking treadmill a treadmill today and that didn't even fucking work <laughs> i think they got it working because there was like an extra step like okay. we missed that but it wasn't in the book Oh, so the lady who did it, uh, she fucking looked it up and got the info. So I think it's working now, but that's good. Even if not, I'll go back over and disassemble that thing. She paid me, but she gives me, she gave me way too much money. She gave me like 50 bucks. I'm like, yeah, you don't have to do that. I literally said to my mom when she was like telling me to go help her, I was like, she was like, M will pay you. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm just like, uh, no, no. She doesn't have to pay me. I don't. It's it's like putting together IKEA furniture. Give me like yeah. a six pack or something, which I overcharged my sister when I went to go help her last week because she gave me a two for. Well, she made you put together a bunch of shit. Yeah. Well, she. I went like it's, but it's still a two for for like an hour's worth of work. I guess that's technically with how around how much I get paid, but you know. <laughs> Because I do value my time based off of how my work values my time. Yeah. Except for when I inevitably lose my job and I go back to being minimum wage. Then I'm still going to value yep. my time with my old work's time. <laughs> 
it's like, yeah, yeah, you make 15 minimum wage. I'm like, yeah, but I used to make 27 an hour. So guess what? Fucking pay me that much. <laughs> uh, Capitalism, am I right, boys? You right. You're 100% right. Yeah. Do you want to hear something that's going to put me on the Trader to America list? Yeah, sure. Harley Quinn's a better fucking show than Rick and Morty. I think... I think you're wrong. Uh, I think Rick and Morty does things, but they're just, they're just a lot... Like Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon are just two guys who like want to make things and like like they want to tell like tell you like little jokes. They want things to be like hidden. They want you to figure it out. But the average Rick and Morty fan is too stupid to get it. I just think that like what the thing with Rick and Morty is, it's like it's got a similar problem to to Family Guy in South Park, and it's that no, I'm, letting, I'm waiting. I'm letting you finish. It also has, just like those shows, even though it's better, in my opinion, it's much better than those shows, but like those shows, it has the fucking, it just has really bad morals and like really bad messaging and its politics is bad. Like it's just like, oh, you shouldn't care. Caring's for losers. I'm like, fuck you. You know who else says all cops are bastards though? Yeah, I know. Rick Sanchez. Yeah, but. (laughs) No, but it's a a show that they want, they think it's. They think it's funny to like murder and like fuck up like entire human beings and species and shit. Like my vibe is I'm okay with like the murder shit. I like I like Harley Quinn again. That show's just as bad. Rick is a psychopath that you're not supposed to like, but then they keep making him do cool things and like live a cool like. Other than being an alcoholic who's like super depressed, which there's some there's a lot of bros out there who think those are cool character traits. Yeah, they're not drinking all the time sucks. (laughs) Yep. Like if you like I feel awful right now cuz I haven't had a drink yet today. But that's because I'm hung over. And the re- the when you're hung over, actually if you're hung over and you start drinking again, you get drunk a lot faster, so you feel better faster, and that's how alcoholism works. Yep. <laughs> Is it's like I have such a bad hangover that if I literally stop drinking, I might have to go to the hospital. Mm. So, well no, not me. Personally. Yeah, like you've been you're talking about that situation. Yeah, that's Is, how yeah. alcoholism starts. Like just IMO, I feel like Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn gets to do just as much murder, just as much like kind of, kind of edgy shit. They swear, they kill, they blood Actually, and guts. She swears more than Rick and Morty because yeah, because Harley Quinn is on a exclusive streaming service. Yeah, where you they don't have to. It's on its own streaming service. It doesn't have to fucking care about standards and practices. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it does, but it doesn't have to do like TV version where it's yeah. like we gotta run this on air. It's it like, gets to it gets to have as much sex, drugs, and rock and roll as it wants. It gets to use a bunch of characters and, and that already exist and spin them all into different interesting yeah, ways. And murder them and murder them whenever yeah. they want. Like it's like oh, you get to do cool story shit. You get to do cool character shit. You get to do really funny bits. You get to do action with like blood and guts and shit. Yeah. Like it's like everything that Rick and Morty wants, like tries to be in a lot of ways, Every, but, but it just skews a lot better. Yeah. Where Rick and Morty is like a, is like a nihilist being like, everything sucks, whatever. Who cares? Fuck the man. Yeah. It's like, he's a hyper violent, like protester. <laughs> I wouldn't even say that he is. He's like, he, he's like Joker. He just wants his own selfish gains, and w- if that does go along with what groups of people in the public want, it's like a selfish nihilist. Yeah, like a selfish nihilist. Like, yeah. he, he, you know, Rick doesn't hate cops because cops are racist and they target minorities. He hates cops because he, they stop him. He from hates doing cops because they stop do. him from doing the bad things that he wants yeah. to do. Or he hates bureaucrats because they like need to go through a like you have to go through like a bunch of paperwork and they really need to track you everywhere you're going and he's like morality is just a social construct and i can do whatever i want and be as much of an asshole as i want because the real world doesn't care violent libertarian (laughs) yeah that's it that's what he is yeah whereas i feel like harley quinn every time they even though it's about crimes and doing bad shit every time they manage to skew it in a way where you're like yeah you're right the cops do suck in this city. Yeah, and and also as soon as the fucking they lose their precinct, they go and they join Bane's gang and then immediately yeah. betray their old commissioner and steal his money. Yeah, and Commissioner Gordon is like an unstable wreck. Yeah, who wants to use tanks whenever he wants because the taxpayer bought a man tanks. who he doesn't even know his identity. 
Yeah. And who was also like standoffish and just like, yeah, whatever, Gordon. And I love how they portray Batman friends. as a petulant that, child. That fucking joke. <laughs> yeah. But, you saw my background, didn't you? Well, where he's like talking, where he's talking to Harley Quinn about how he doesn't give a shit about Jim Gordon. And then it's like the picture is like Batman fucking wide eyed smiling with like uh, eating a hot dog next to Gordon at a family picnic. And it's like, <laughs> you saw my computer background. Yeah. But also like, Come on, Damien. I cooked your favorite. You didn't cook it. You had Alfred you do, do it, it. But I told him to do it. <laughs> yeah. no, Bruce Wayne is an unadjusted, like a shitty adjusted child. Like, it's such a good show because it manages to do that stuff with the Batman thing. And it's great. I would like I, to see a Batman movie where the stakes for the mi- like end of the movie isn't the whole city being destroyed. Yeah. Like, Same with the Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Like... Because the best Spider-Man Smaller episodes are about stakes. super small, small-scale shit. Yeah. Not That's even... what's great about Daredevil. It's about a guy who's trying to buy six buildings. Yeah. Or it's like... It's season one. They're least. trying to save the city. They're not trying to save the city. They're trying to save, like... A small family within the city, yeah. but why does Spider-Man just trying to save them? Because that's what heroes do. Again, the best Spider-Man comic I've ever read was the recent, the end of Chip Zdarsky's run, which is about a guy who's making a documentary of all the people that Spider-Man has helped. Yeah, and it's like I've said this on the podcast because I talked about it to Davis. Or but Batman's always so fucking high profile. Yeah, well, sorry. With, with the Spider-Man comic, what's really yeah. good about it is it winds up focusing on the story of Spider-Man. Who like helps this guy who was just supposed to be a watch, a lookout for a for a theft that happens, and so he's like, oh, this guy's just a kid. So the other guys who are involved, you know, whatever, I catch them. I'm Spider Man, but uh, this guy's like just a kid. He's 14. He got roped into this, so yeah. he like helps him. But then he like shows up at the apartment later and helps that kid like get better at algebra. And then like one time when Spider Man wasn't there, when those guys got back out after they went away for their crime. Um, they kill the kid and Spider-Man doesn't know. He shows up to help with the algebra and there's nobody there and the mom hugs Spider-Man oh. and Spider-Man leaves and you just see him on the roof take the mask off and fucking start crying and you're like, oh shit, this is a great comic. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a really good like episode of a TV show. Right. Wouldn't really fit a movie. Exactly. That's what I mean, yeah. right? The Every movie, ha- although that's what I don't like about Marvel movies is they're all one long TV show but they all have to be like the fucking most stakes in the world. Yeah, and you kind of emotionally most of the time, at least in the, the previous emotional ones, stakes are so, always so low. Yeah, like oh my girlfriend. Oh yeah, the woman you. Well, at least with like Thor two, it was like they were kind of together. But th- well, Thor is not a good one. But Thor one, it's like the woman that you just kind of want to put your dick inside. You gotta go save her. You gotta go do real hard. Where you're kind of yeah, you know what? At the start it, of the Far movie. from home though, I did like because they do yeah, have like good. The emotional growth in Far yeah. from Home is stellar. Yeah. Like, especially the, or like, also a really good job of like setting up like he's supposed to be the next Tony Stark. Without it, and be like, oh, he Or is, he's not supposed yeah. to be the next Tony Stark. He's supposed to be the next guy. He's supposed to be him, and he doesn't need to be the next Tony Stark. He's just, it's just that Tony left him a lot of his Avengers nonsense. Yeah. Uh, it's just. And Jake Gyllenhaal's great in that movie. He was really good. Uh, I just, I'm excited that they did get the right, like, that some, that Disney was prevented from fucking uh, Sony out of money. Yeah. Because that was ridiculous that they were that Sony probably wasn't even going to get the cost of the movie. Well, Sony's like, we have the rights to Spider-Man, and Disney's like, we want to use him. And Sony's like, okay, but we need to get a lot of the money every time we make a Spider-Man movie. We're going to take 50-50 of the profits or something. No, Sony takes almost all of it. Okay, it's just that Spider-Man is able to be used in other Disney properties. Yeah. So if it's not a Spider-Man movie, they make the money, but Spider-Man happens to be in it. But then Spider-Man Far From Home came out, and it's like the second highest grossing or the third highest grossing movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, and And so... Sony got like 90% of that money. Which they should. Because they they also... They they also paid for it. They pay for the entire movie. Yeah, it's It's, just that it's like uh, Kevin Feige produces it and goes over. I don't think Feige was one of the guys who wanted wanted this money. It was like... No, it's not. It was like probably Perlmutter. Yeah, it was like... Which piece of shit, by the way. The richer guys up top were just like, oh, we're we're allowing them to use our world. They just own one character (laughs) in it. It's like, they own the titular character (laughs) for the world. They own the best Marvel character. Yeah. So, like, oh, but they used Happy Hogan. Ooh. You know... And we own Happy Hogan, so yeah. I think we deserve ninety percent of the profit. <laughs> the the Sony Pictures universe and of Marvel characters is the only good one. They're, we're gonna build a nice 
good, beautiful Spider-Man trilogy, and they're going to pay for it, but we're going <laughs> to reap the rewards. Yeah. No, Marvel's like, we want that Spider-Man, and Sony's like, no. no? Well, Disney's like, we want that Spider-Man, which... Yeah. Uh, no, Perlmutter. Pearl, Perlmutter is like, I want more money so I can donate more money to yeah. Donald Trump. If fucking... Because Ike, Ike Perlmutter, the CEO all... of Marvel, is the biggest uh, donator to Donald Trump. If Sony Pictures didn't have... Like, if Sony didn't have literally everything else going for them, like, their <sighs> video game division's fucking popping off. Boo! They're, uh, they made good techno- technology shit, yeah. like TVs and... The, they own Blu-ray. Yeah. Um, the PS Vita revolutionized handheld gaming. <laughs> without the Vita, we wouldn't have had the Switch. But without the, the Switch P- is still not as good as the Vita. Without the PS Vita, you'd never own a phone. What? You wouldn't own a smartphone if it weren't for the PS Vita. That doesn't make any sense to me. The PS Vita came out in 2012 and invented the smartphone. No, Nathan? Yeah. I think the first iPhone, like 3GS, came out in 2008. <laughs> I think you're wrong. I think I'm right, because I remember <laughs> in grade nine, my buddy had it. <laughs> so did I. Yeah. Well, fuck you. <laughs> I got a smartphone when I was like, like grade 10. Because my mom wasn't going to so buy it. So a year me. after me? Yeah. One year after me? Yeah. I got an iPhone 4. iPhone 4 was good. It was free. Because <laughs> mm. it was like a contract one. But that was oh, when yeah. contracts were three years, and that was brutal. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, now they're one, now they're two years, and this phone is four years old, because I don't need a new phone. Yeah, because <laughs> phones aren't advancing as fast as they used to. But Ian, you got to get that phone that came out that has a. Uh, you got to get the Galaxy Flip. No, nah. it's like two. It's like two Android phones, but where they open up like yeah, a buck. I don't think so. <laughs> I kind of want one, but apparently they did not work. Um, when they first came out. I just don't like... Like, this is just good to me. Like, it's, yeah, I have an iPhone that's X. That's all I need. It does yeah. what I need it to do. I don't really... When I play games on my phone, they're like small games made oh, yeah. for phones. I have. I did try and like play like Sinar or Wild Hearts because Apple Arcade had like a free bud trial. It's all right. I, it's, I it's prefer still, it on PC. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the fact of the matter... Simogo, Simogo by the way, they... All their games before Sign Our Wild Hearts were mobile games that did really yeah. well. But also but, on the mobile version, it's like you kind of you know you went, did you play on keyboard? Did you play on your? Computer? I played on my Switch. You're, okay, so it's on. Well, I assume on the Switch you use the left and left, the left and right stick. Yeah, or just the left stick to go. Yeah, back and forth. On PC, it's all in the mouse. Oh, so it's like that's just that. It's like kind of moving the mouse into where you want the character to go. Yeah. But on the phone, it has it has a very low like sensitivity. So oh. like I'm I thought, you know, thumb in the center of the screen. Move yeah. left and right character moves. But the sensitivity doesn't match. So it would be like, I gotta go to the right. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. Um yeah. although congrats on them for getting it to fucking 60 fps on all fucking things oh yeah it's a sick game yeah no but i mean 60 fps on every system yeah that's like surprising because it's on every system yeah i gotta buy shantae on the seven sirens now oh yeah well because it's it was an apple arcade game exclusively oh shit but now it's out now on it's steam on, on the real but players here's that the people fucking wanted thing. to play it on my apple arcade is like eight, eight bucks a month yeah I can play Shantae for free because I have that. Yep. On Steam, though, $34. <laughs> yeah, but you know the version on phone sucks poop. Yeah, obviously, because you, yeah. like, you want to like take up half the Like, Skullgirls is great on mobile, but you're not going to play the mobile version only. Yeah. Also, can is it still six buttons on mobile? No, it's a different... It's an entirely different thing. Yeah. It's actually quite good. It's all. It's not. It's it's better than Injustice Mobile, which is good. The thing I hate the most about Injustice Mobile because it's like a fine game, but the thing I hate the most about the mobile version of Injustice is, for whatever reason, the arcade port of Injustice that you'll find at any Dave and Buster's is based on the fucking mobile version. It's a two button. Like, how the fuck do you base the arcade version of a fighting game on the fucking mobile version? <laughs> Like, that's so stupid. Okay, so I got a couple pieces of news for you before we get on to the weeks. <laughs> that's fine. All right. These are things that you'll probably like. So, one. What are you looking Go for? Go on. Okay. One is that a leak 
uh, has revealed. What are you looking at? I was looking at your fucking Richter amiibo, you piece of shit. It's cool, right? No, he's not. Richter's a punk bitch. Richter's cool. <laughs> Richter's cool. I saw him in the change room. I heard he has an eight pack. <laughs> Richter is ripped. Anyway, Ian. So you know how the PS5 thing was supposed to happen this week, but then PlayStation, uh, you know, realized they wouldn't be the top hashtag, so then they moved it to be later. That's most likely a top <laughs> reason, but I'm sure it's also because there is probably a game where you kill police. <laughs> then you should have released it. <laughs> Pull a, pull a fucking uh, Randy Pitchford. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for a game where you can kill do shitty cops, Duke Nukem 3D <laughs> is, Full on, price. If, is on the Epic Game Store. It's like, hey, Randy, you really you want to give a discount code for that or something? Because yeah. that's like, why would you just tell us that? Yeah. No. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to make a promise to all the listeners. I will never take Gearbox's money if they offer it to me, but that's that they're the only ones. I'll take Rage Shadow Legends money. Oh, I'd take anyone's money. I'll take most people's I'll money. I'll take Gearbox's money as long as in my ad read I'm allowed to talk shit on Randy Pitchford. You wouldn't be. But what like why wouldn't I why would I not take their money? Huh? I get to I just, take money. I from just them. would like feel bad for after like I'd, this. I'd take Chick fil A's money. <laughs> <laughs> I you know what? Yeah, I would. Because you're taking their money yeah. and advertising their product. Because it to like give them more also money. Randy yeah, only gets whatever. the big bonus when it's a new game. Yeah. If they were like, uh, tell them that Borderlands is like three is on sale or something on the Epic Game Store. You know what? I guess yeah, I guess yeah. I would take their money. I take Rage Shadow Legends oh, money over it. Advertising? Though. Fuck yeah, I'd take Rage Shadow Legends and money in a yeah. second. They pay so much for their dumb bullshit, terrible, annoying ads. Hey, I think that, you know what? I think their ads. Like you know, like the ones they do that yeah. like play in front of YouTube. I think there, there's a no. I mean, the, I mean the ones that they make YouTubers make. Oh, but <laughs> I don't know. Some of them are funny because people are oh, yeah. memeing them now. But other like back in the well, they, ads they, are funnier when they get slipped in or yeah. like they let the 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 content creator do like a free like flow of the ad. Yeah. Like fucking, I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about MeUndies and they were just talking about how they like to come and then put their MeUndies on. It's just like. <laughs> That like a lot of places don't really wouldn't really want you to t- talk about their fucking ad like that. Yeah, but it makes me like like I have undies. This shit's great. <laughs> give us money. <laughs> give us money. I'll yeah. start wearing briefs if you give us money. Me undies. Well, boxer briefs. Like, well, yeah, boxer briefs or whatever. Yeah. I, you don't have to wear like fucking tidy whities. Yeah, I'll stop wearing fucking. I'll switch. I'll oh, no, switch they have, to your poopy they brand. Do- they do have uh, boxers, like not. Briefs. Oh, they have they have boxers, boxers. Then yeah. I'll buy those. Yeah, I'll or I'll get those with the product deal. Give me money, <laughs> please. Okay, let's stop anyway. sipping for uh, corporations. So, please, somebody pay me. <laughs> somebody stop me. <laughs> somebody stop me. <laughs> uh, but um, anyway, we got we got a leak. You ready to hear this leak, Ian? Was it's it yours. About, well, you brought up PS Five. Was what it was it. What it was supposed the reveal was is one of the games about sick. What is it? Bloodborne HD, PS5 and PC. All right, good. As long as it's on PC. Yeah, it's gonna run 60 FPS. All that shit. I hope they fix the Chalice dungeons and make them playable. Okay, they're playable? yeah. So then that came out, and then somebody was spreading the rumor like, oh, that's the one that um. Is that gonna have Bloodborne card attached to it? Uh, yeah, well, uh, no, but people were set, uh, someone like, made a render rumors. of Bloodborne cart a long time ago, and it looked it's fucking so good. funny. It looked so good. I uh, will. Do you remember? No, you probably weren't wearing PlayStation All Stars. Somebody race Royale. <laughs> after after um, Uncharted Three came out, somebody was like, "Oh, they're gonna do the Jack and Daxter thing." So then they, somebody uh, put together Uncharted X racing. <laughs> Uh, which is funny. Yeah, um, no, I should fucking. Go but they should have called it uncarded. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they should do. I think PlayStation All Stars Racing would be a fun one to do. I think we need a PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale too. No, just call it PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale and just make a good game. <laughs> yeah, now make it a make it a Power Stone clone. Don't make it a Smash clone. Make it like, well, did Power Stone have health bars? Or do they have percentages where they're like don't I don't I don't like how you could beat the shit out of someone for like an hour and them not die you had to use like your super on them yeah I would rather it be like Smash where like you can knock them out of bounds on the map oh yeah anyway like, so properly. then yeah and also all those maps were very cluttered like yeah 
They felt like maps that would like I would be seeing like an well because they switched they switched between uh from one game to like include stuff from a second game so it would be like oh you're playing on the uh, the local Roco map and then like the background would fall off and the Metal Gear Rex from Revengeance was there yeah it was just all very cluttered yeah I, th- I think it was a cool idea though yeah I think th- just to to like do mashup if levels if you're gonna do Smash stuff though just make it a platform. Like do make it an interesting platform, but get rid of a ground floor. I, the Smash maps that are have like that don't have like the you can't fall off the yeah sides. the God the God of War map is not good. Can't remember it. It's just like a thing, and then hell's in the background, yeah. and then and then it switches to like Patapon or something. You got to feature Dante from the Devil May Cry series, but it's the real Dante, <laughs> yeah. and he gets put in his intro into the game is that he beats the shit out shit out of old Dante. Yeah, and well, says that the w- there was this quote know, from when, when the game came out, shit. and it's like if you told me that there would be a video game that I could play where Raiden was and Dante were both in it, and Raiden was the cool one, <laughs> I wouldn't believe you. Like Raiden from Revengeance. Yeah, because because Raiden was in MGS two, and he's like the lame one. Yeah, and then in Revengeance, he's sick. And then, like, meanwhile, Dante was sick in the PS2 era, and then the fucking 2013 Dante is poopy. Yeah. Um, also, Big Daddy's in it, but his level... Oh, the fucking Uncharted level is great. It's cool. It's, it's like, awesome. It's the plane section from Uncharted 3. It's the 3. plane section from Arthur- Uncharted 3, and then it turns into Columbia from Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. Which is dope. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, but yeah, anyway... Uh, so Bloodborne HD, and then the rumor was like, oh, some some rumor that actually came out that wasn't this leak, which was this leak was like pretty verifiable. But the, then a rumor came out. It's like, oh, that's the one that um, what is it? Blue Point, the people who make the really good remake games like Shadow of the Colossus, is Blue Point. I think. Are they doing the? They were saying, oh, they're doing the HD version of Bloodborne. That's what they were working on. And I'm like, yeah. they no, they were. St- I know st- they do good. They do. Up- uprises there's just things i would like to be changed in bloodborne they do really fantastic stuff anyway but people were like that's it one person was like that's it and then another person who like made the first leak was like this is wrong that's not true and it's like what the the thing that blue point's working on is demon souls remake that would be great yeah because demon souls has actually been unplayable <laughs> where you got dark souls one you could play it on any console it was yeah. bad on every console and then they put the then there's the prepare die edition which worked better on consoles but dog shit on PC and then they had the remaster and then Dark Souls 2 was available on PS3 the and remaster PS4. the Dark Souls remaster I heard some people say it sucks some people say it's great it is no it's good okay the it people who made the Dark Souls remaster are doing the Bloodborne one it sucks because there's little things about it yeah it's pretty much that they just popped it like through DS fix from the um the mo- like the mod that fixed the game on PC. Yeah. They just integrated it and then left out some shit. They even added there was some like content that was supposed to be in the base game that just didn't work that they made work. Oh, that's cool. But people just don't like it because it was forty dollars for the exact same game. Oh yeah. But when like the it and the texture upres it doesn't look as good as Dark Souls three. Oh. Or Dark Souls three doesn't even look that good. So it was just people going. Wow. Yeah, Bloodborne looks better than Dark Souls Three from yeah. what I've seen. Well, because because Bloodborne has like a like a straight it's style, nighttime. and it's really easy to f- like hide shit with gray and stuff. Where yeah. Blood- Dark Souls Three has a lot more color. And uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, Bloodborne. Bloodborne HD. also has that flowy hair technology yeah. on like a bunch of the monsters. Like Vicar Amelia is one of the coolest bosses I've ever fought in a video game. So so everybody get excited for. Bloodborne Super Turbo HD Remix, the new Challengers. I'll probably get that on PC, and yeah, hopefully sure someone will. makes a mod where just all Chalice Dungeons are accessible. Because Chalice Dungeons were these things you had to grind like yeah. materials to be able to access them, and to get every single weapon in the game, the, you had to grind through them. For me, as like obviously me, me personally, and I don't play any of these games, the thing that's the coolest is Demon Souls. Because now all of my friends who like the Souls series aren't fake fans anymore when that comes out. Yeah, we can play it for real. Yeah. PS5 exclusive. Damn it, now I have to buy it immediately. Well, you were gonna get it. Yeah, but I could have, like, yeah. waited. Well, you'll wait until it comes out. It yeah. wasn't like, it wasn't well, announced no, to be a launch title or I anything. I didn't wait for when Bloodborne came out. I bought my PS4, like, a month before. Oh, yeah. Well, I knew it was coming out, so I was like, I might as well go buy it. And then my fucking PS4 just sat there. I didn't touch it. <laughs> Because what was I going to play? Yeah. There wasn't... Bloodborne wasn't out, and I had no interest in Uncharted yet. And then I 
rectified that. Yeah. And then years later, I got into Uncharted and Yakuza, the two best uh, franchises on the PlayStation. Persona. You're right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, Persona 6 on the PS5. I don't care. <laughs> it probably will come out on the PS5. That's fine. But uh, it's I, I'm not in that much of a rush to get yeah. a new Persona game. I would rather see some... I'd rather see uh, Golden come out again. Yeah. And th- I bet you they will do a, like a more of a remake of 3 with the... Because mo- what they were... What, the thing with Royal is the reason why the character models are better in Royal is because they use the, ver- the character models from the dancing game. Yeah. P5D. Um, P5D's so these nuts. <laughs> uh, so but then um, uh, fuck, uh, P P three got also the dance a dancing game. So like, why not? Why not yeah. make P three just remake P three with P 5s engine? Yeah, uh, you totally should because I don't want to go. I want, but I also would like the gameplay to be changed to reflect how it works in P five. I like okay. I want it to maintain its classicness in some ways, but just oh, farted. No, Nathan, old bad. No, um, but I uh, think father, I require the, new. <laughs> the thing, the change that the, that needs to be made is that you need to control all your teammates in a fight. Yes, that's, that's what it. I'm talking about. That's the only thing. I have no issue with anything else. I would just like to be able to control my team. Yeah, because I think like you had to rely on your the AI to heal you. You had to rely on a lot of the AI to do anything. Yeah. Like, so would, uh, their turns were all AI controlled. You had like lists. You could change like their personality. Yeah, you could change action. Like how they would like, ooh, do go melee focused. Do you use your SP without like, yeah. or like, you know, be tactical, which is when they would use like shit, which is in like Dragon Quest. And it's in P5. It's just, it's better for you to do it yourself. Yeah. When I'm grinding in like Dragon Quest though, I would put it on auto because, you know, when you're just, yeah, beating up enemies that you're almost one shotting, but they're the best XP you can get. You just fucking mash A and just do full attacks. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, what else? What was the other thing? Oh yeah. Uh. Oh yeah. Re eight was also supposed to be in that presentation. And uh, oh, the third thing. Uh, this is more more of a of like low key shit. But uh, Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> okay. So Final Fantasy 16, we don't know if it would have been announced there, but we know for a fact that um, Yoshi P, who did, who's the big guy on 14, is not the director on this, but he's a producer. Woo! <laughs> uh, and it seems like, based on what they're doing... Actually, wait, isn't Yoshi P the good one? <laughs> yeah, he did the good 14. The, the FF7 guy, one of the guys in charge of that shit, he is not a good one. Well, one of the like Nomura's good, but like he uh, he's overly ambitious. Um, so he he's probably the reason why FF Seven got extended into more than one game. Uh, it was always planned to be episodic. Okay. Yeah. But then remember they were like, they, someone said three games, and then Nomura like was like mm, maybe more. Yeah, they just haven't decided. But uh, which I think means they were just gonna do like so, I don't know. Did you ever deal with Zach in um? Like, did he? Did you ever play as him in the original FF Seven? Uh, yes, for a little bit. So maybe they spin off and make it a, like an entire game where you played Zack or something. Well, yeah, you play as Zack in Crisis Core. Yeah, so they might remake uh, Crisis Core as yeah. like FF Seven remake. Uh, two Disc point three. Two. <laughs> no, no, we're gonna go fucking Kingdom Hearts in this. Yeah. Uh, Nomura is also the Kingdom Hearts guy, but the guy yeah. who sucks who worked on um. FF7R is uh, Toriyama. Toriyama is the worst. What do you got a problem with Dragon Ball? <laughs> no, the Toriyama that works at Square Enix yeah. did 13, 1, 2, and 3, and he did uh, Parasite Eve, the third birthday. So, which isn't that like a... Re- third birthday is a bad one, isn't it? Third birthday is the worst. It's barely a Parasite Eve game, and also it's all about, hey, look how sexy this main character is. How many times you should she You want to fuck be- her, don't you? <laughs> you know you want to fuck her. Yeah, um... I think let's not care about FF sixteen. Let's finish. No, let me give you a reason first. why to give a shit. Why? Okay, so a FF seven remake and and FF sixteen is two different because there's like three. I know there's Japanese a bunch of big teams. Teams, but maybe put sixteen in a conceptual stage, but 
finish like get a lot they've been working on 16 for about two years okay but put a lot of fucking dev time into making seven because people don't like waiting for square enix to finish oh they're going to they're going to they have the entire team they can't just add more people at this point like it's it's done it's in it's in the pipeline they can't really change much about that i guess but what i'm saying is 16 they've been working on for two years now uh they took the writer who did uh who worked on 14 from the writers and directors of this game are all from 14 they did from a realm reborn all the way to the end of heaven sword before they so the good shipped. parts yeah the best parts yeah and then um they're they're grabbing a lot of new talent the big one that just came out is like they grabbed uh, a designer who worked on from capcom who worked on uh devil may cry four and five uh so it looks like they're still going for action-based combat because they're also grabbing other people from other action-based things, but yeah. he's the he's the one that we just found out about. But uh, so <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, it's just yeah. I, I I one of my buddies sent me a message, and then I was just checking my other messages. I phone sent me an image that said, "It's time to capitalists face the facts. Communist countries have never had problems with police brutality." <laughs> uh, but yeah. So FF16 is going to go for more action combat. They grabbed somebody who worked on, like the, the, a designer who worked on uh, Devil May Cry 4, Devil May Cry 5, and uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and 3. And Dragon's Dogma. So, dope shit. Yeah. Like, on the one hand, I'm like, cool, those are all great games. This guy's done great work as a designer for action. And, you know, if that's what they're going for, he's a good pick. And on the other hand, I'm like... Why can't we make like a classic kind of fantasy with turn based, please? That would be fun. I think well it's like the it's like the opposite of the Yakuza issue. Yeah, it's like where Yakuza's now this turn based because they're mixing up the combat, but it's like I haven't played it yet. I'm sure it's a good game because it is it does look It looks great. Good. It's just uh it's just I mean really... Sega makes great turn based games. Do they? Uh yeah, like uh Valkyria Chronicles. Well actually I guess Atlas is a part of Sega. So yeah. So Persona. Yeah, Persona, Valkyria Chronicles uh, what's that one? Uh, they make the soccer Italian Wars. Ones? I think they they might do Atelier. Yeah, but it's just it's like if Yakuza like Yakuza Seven comes out does well, Yakuza Eight comes out, and then someone sees like that it's turn based again. Yeah, and you're just like, please go back. <laughs> the cool thing to do with the Yakuza Eight would be if multiple playing- characters you get to play as Ichiban, and he has. Uh, <laughs> you know me so well <laughs> because we went over this like a week or so ten ago. times. <laughs> On the podcast, in 10 different episodes, we've said, well, if they do a sequel, when you're playing as Ichiban, it's turn-based. When you're playing as fucking Kiryu, it's regular. I don't think Kiryu is ever going to come back as a I'm, character. Just as an example. Yeah. Like, give me give me Akiyama back. Akiyama. I'll be fine if the police guy from 4 comes back. I don't, I don't want... don't care. The, uh, no, like, I liked him. He's fine, but, but he's my know, least favorite actually, part of no, that all game. all cops are bastards, so yeah. I can't have him. Well, not even just that, but also, like, his story and characters and and personality are the least interesting part of 4. Yeah. Like, compared to the other new characters that you meet, Akiyama and fucking Taiga, like, even if you don't really like I don't even playing... like Taiga that much in 4. I think Taiga is, like, at his best in 5. Yeah, but... Because he's so... He's, you know what I mean? Like His when... rage has been quelled. Yeah. Like, he's no longer, like... My, I was, uh, and I was betrayed by my brother and by my organization. Yeah, but I mean, like, even in four, though, I just find him. Even if I don't like him, I find him very interesting. Yeah, right. Like it's it's fucking crazy to be introduced to a character as he shot thirteen people. Yeah, he <laughs> literally like, oh, did shit. the biggest. Like he, had, he did one of the biggest massacres in fucking Dojo in Clan history, Japanese history. Yeah. <laughs> well. Fuck, what's it? Domestic massacres. Yeah. Because they did, you know... They did all those bad things. To in the World Koreans War II and, and the Chinese. Era. Yep. And the Taiwanese. And, you I'll know... never forgive the Japanese. <laughs> they stole my daughter away, and that's the only reason why. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't watch Attack on Titan because the main character is named Mikasa, which is named after a battleship, which they used to hurt fucking... <laughs> Koreans? What do you have to He's say about Korean how anti-Semitic uh, Attack on Titan gets? Uh, I don't even actually read it. <laughs> no, I, no, no. I meant like to that character who's like, don't watch it because of this bullshit. <laughs> and it's like, well, what about all the parts that is like Jewish people are evil? Yeah. <laughs> also, that just, part's fine, actually. Because um, <laughs> yeah, I believe that. <laughs> um, 
So I saw this fucking meme that was so dark. What? It was uh, it was like you ever see the full metal? It's a full metal alchemist meme. Like just the the background image, yeah. where it's like two giant muscly men like shaking hands. Oh yeah, you was, put text over it. Yeah. One of them was from Full Metal Alchemist, where it says Nina Tucker, and then this character from uh the what would be the main character's aunt if she didn't die at the age of seven, and mm-hmm. the over the hands it said being really good friends with dogs. <laughs> I won't tell you what happens to me. I Nina know Tucker. what happens. I'm not a fucking idiot. You might not, and she I gets... don't want other people. No, I don't want All other right. people to know because everyone's got to experience that once in their life. All right. But the other I haven't even one seen the app. Attack I just Titan, know it because it's such a well known meme. Well, the other one on Attack on Titan, uh, spoilers, uh, she gets ripped apart by dogs. <laughs> oh, shit. Like she was a seven year old who. It, it was like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I remember. Yeah, I don't know if they animate. I don't think they animated that yet because I think that's in the most recent season coming up. Yeah, season four apparently though looks great. Like if you can, you the know, whole get show's past always the looked good. Yeah, it's but just that I don't care for how convoluted it is. I just don't like it. Like I have the opposite problem. <laughs> I'm like, man, this show's kind of whatever. It's, it's like just kind of lame. They like they tell they tell you about the like in fucking like season one you saw that like the there's like giants inside the wall or some shit mm-hmm. and then like 10 like fucking years later there's still like so anyways you guys talk about that fuck off you we're gonna go rape in the a basement, woman ian <laughs> we're gonna go racism uh, we're gonna have historia get raped come on oh, that sucks yeah man she gets like a baby fucked into her and that's the, gross but when i saw the image of her pregnant she was like you know anime like wide-eyed fucking shadows over the eyes i'm like oh that's brutal Especially yep. since she was gay. Uh, yeah, well, okay. So, yeah. Hey, the person who writes it also hates women and gay people. Hates women and gays. The only competent woman on that show is Mikasa, and she's Potato like... Potato girl. She's like, fuck... No, she's not competent. No, I'm just saying, like, the only good thing about Attack on Titan is that episode of Attack on Titan bridged. Actually, there was yeah, that was pretty good. Um, was, that, the the potato girl actually had like a cool background. Like she killed two titans with her bare hands, like as a like yeah. as a young teen because they were like attacking her brothers or some shit. I just it I looks just cool, point but out it's also like she can the do attack that. on Titan a bridge thing that TFS did. It sucks that that got canceled because not only is that super funny, it's like the most I've laughed at one of those things. Really, it is. It's because it, like. It doesn't give enough of a shit about the story of Attack on Titan. Yeah, the, it was like, a real, it was a proper abridge and not like a redub. Yeah, so it's like, it's like, like the guy doing like the Patrick War- Warburton voice. Yeah, it's so fucking funny. Well, like you know, I've been watching the bridge stuff, like Lil Karibo shit for yeah. like since it came out. Yeah. So I obviously have laughed super hard at Yu Gi Oh abridged like yeah. shit. Yu Gi Oh abridged is really funny. No, it's not that. It doesn't hold up well. Oh, oh yeah. The newer stuff is good, but when you I go back, I haven't watched it in ages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the newer stuff was good, but when you go back to the beginning, it's like wow, this is like LMAO RAR XD MySpace humor. Yeah, I think one of the best my jokes... hair is telling you that this my fingers are uh, we're pointing guns at you. Blah. Yeah. Why do I have a Brooklyn Screw the accent? rules, I have money. Like, yeah, it's, well, it's like it's very old. But it's very, it was a guy who's not a comedian who just has these voices that... He's just like, oh, doing. I can do voices and I can... And I like Yu-Gi-Oh a lot. Let me yeah, just make it. Yeah, got funnier as time thing. went on. Yeah. Uh, TFS was like always better, but that's because it was multiple people. TFS, but also has a real hard... By free... The fucking Saiyan Saga is like nothing but like memes. Yeah, it's the not really good writing. Yeah, but at there's the, good parts of it. But yeah, the, towards the end of the Frieza saga, it's like, oh, this shit is cash. This is amazing. And then all of the Android saga is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then Boo is never gonna happen. So yeah, which is fair. I mean, some of the I I like their Final Fantasy VII Machine Abridged. It's I pretty watch good. It. Justin Briner is Cloud. Cool. It's Kira Buckland as a uh, Surfer Man. <laughs> yeah. It's Kira Buckland as a. Uh, I got enough Justin uh, Briner as Meliodas in the show where uh, <laughs> with straight Shota. I don't need more. Fucking hate that. What? Uh, the Seven Deadly Sins. Like, oh yeah. The main character is a child. Wait, Justin Briner's in that? I think. One second. I believe he's the Justin Briner does the. He's Kirito, right? No, Justin Briner is uh isn't Kirito. He's um. He's a uh, Midoriya. 
Oh, no, no, no. They're not. It's different. It's the guy who does Kirito. Oh, yeah. Like uh, that's does... Bryce Pappenbrook, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's the main, main character in yeah. Seven Deadly Sins. By the end of Seven Deadly Sins, there is like a 30... No, there's like a 10-year time skip, and he's still the same size, and he's still that child. Despite the fact that there is a, por- a point in the show where his dad possesses his body and he turns into a big buff man. And it's like, why don't you just grow the fuck up? Because it's a bad show. They also killed off the coolest character in that show. Cool. Yeah. And well, in the final battle they did, but it's still, it's like, come on, guys. Escanor was the coolest man in the world and you really had to do that to him. So what'd you do this weekend? Absolutely nothing. Like, I'm not even joking. (laughs) I watched probably some more Avatar whenever I felt like it. Because I just do that. I watched the first episode of Harley Quinn. I did watch some of The Good Place. Okay. And that's a fun show. It's a great show. Yeah. It's like the part... Well, like it was like the two two Parks and Rec guys like split up. Yeah. One went Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And yeah. the other one went The Good Place. No, no, no. No. One did Brooklyn Nine-Nine and The Good Place. The other one did Upload and Space Force. Okay. The Good Place is a superior show. Yeah. Yeah. But that's because like it's like focused. Yeah, it's focused on morality and like if you're, are you, d- does morality? If you were so. a bad person, can you become a good person, sort of thing? Yeah, but there's just like little jokes that are really funny. Like they, it like real early on in the first season. Yeah, or actually like midway through because it's 13 episodes. Yeah, they figure out that she's not supposed to be there. Yeah, so she's going through this like litmus test of like <laughs> things, and she answers no to every single one of them, and then Adam Scott shows up who is like the devil yeah <laughs> and he's like hey guys <laughs> and he says something about having a vanity plate and how he wants to go back because bachelor in paradise is starting soon <laughs> and that was two of the things that did you ever have a vanity plate yeah <laughs> or did you ever like enjoy the bachelor and then they and then when they find out that jason uh Janu yeah 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 is not supposed to be there he's the guy named he's jason my well. favorite he is so funny he's so good yeah, how he um, <laughs> they give him the test and he answers yes to everything. Yeah, it's like wow, this guy's legitimately awful. <laughs> like he's from Florida. His way of his he's death great. sounds the worst. His though. death's so rough, but yeah. they play it off as like a joke. Well, which he is, was high on whippet, so he probably yeah. just passed out. And he died doing what he loved. Whippets, whippets in, <laughs> whippets in a in a safe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That show's good. It gets really good, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking... <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's great. I'm glad you're watching that, because I was telling you about it uh, like a week ago or so. Yeah, probably. Or not a week ago. Ages ago on this podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so I've done a few things. I, I've played a couple of games. Yeah. Uh, so I finally beat... Finally beat. Like, I came back to my friend Pedro after, like eight nine months of not playing it uh oh, bananas it's a good game that's re- that game's really fun it's not like it's not it's clearly one of those games where it's like oh we wanted to do our version of hotline miami yeah um and it's definitely not as good but also i think it's far more uh in terms of like what you're doing in gameplay is it's definitely far more ambitious and interesting like Hotline Miami is, oh, it's pixel top down, beat him up, but it's hard, and it's like also you can take shots at my friend Pedro, right? Where you, like you can get hit. Uh, yeah, it's just like a score based thing where you get hit at like bad for your score. Where Hotline yeah, it's Miami, like very like you die, choice. you die from any one hit, and you have yep. to restart the entire level every time. And it's like God fucking damn it. Yeah, it's Hotline Miami is made to be frustrating. Where my friend Pedro is made to make you feel cool and want to go back and try your best. Yeah, that's it's very much like the Dark Souls versus Devil May Cry. Yeah, of indie games. Yeah, very much. Uh, one wants but, you to be cool; the other one wants you to try your fucking. But Hotline Miami die. One actually has like a better story and humor and and world. Yeah, Hotline Miami One has a better story than Hotline Miami Two. Yeah, but like you know, Hotline Miami One's still the better game. But I like my friend Pedro a lot because yeah. it's it's just fun. Like you're like, oh, I got two guns. I'm flying through the air in slow motion. And, it's fun banana time (laughs) and uh alternately the actual game that i think is a sequel and like much better than hotline miami in a lot of ways uh that i played was katana zero Mm. so i played more of that game uh this week that game's really cool uh i got that game when it came out and i was like this game's neat but also it's hard 
Uh, but yeah, much like Hotline Miami, it's pixel based. You die in one hit, and it's got like sort of a, a retro aesthetic. But unlike Hotline Miami, it's cyberpunk. It's about samurais. It's side scrolling. Uh, it has like time slowdown shit. Yeah, it's really neat. It's really fun, and the story is interesting because you actively make choices, and like the levels that you do can be different from what I've heard. Like, which is neat. Uh, and I could be wrong though. Like I heard that at the time, but uh, yeah, like it's really cool. Uh, everybody should play it. If you like Hotline Miami, you should play. Yeah, Katana I bought Zero. it like when it came out. I just never played it. Yeah, you should check it out. Maybe I will. I gotta to actually start playing games again. I got Control. I still have Doom Eternal to fucking play. I still have Vital Fantasy Seven Remake. I still gotta finish Persona Five Royal. I try. I got back into that for like a second. And yeah. I was like, oh, huh. never mind. I'm not in the mood. FF Seven Remake is good, but like I'm far from it now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, that. Uh, yeah, that game's great in a lot of ways, but it's just like. You know, in a lot of ways, I like it, but I feel like... Um, I've just been in the mood to, like, play games and not have them, like, talk to me right now. Like, I kind of just want to play. I don't want to be stopped and, like, talk to and have to watch, like, long cutscenes and, like... Yeah. Like, a Yakuza would kill me right now. Yeah, no, I feel you. Like, I... I uh, that's why I barely played any games this week. Like, I played those two because I can... No. Like, one of them actually has a story, but I've I, been playing them while, like having a youtube video on the tv and i'm playing them on my switch like yeah i i fucking like i've been playing valorant that was not good yesterday yeah (laughs) no it's just um it's just like a vibe like when i play with chris i feel like i do much better because chris is better than me and i just kind of don't want him to yeah he's gonna carry me regardless but i don't want to be i don't want to get like two kills while chris gets 28 yeah like i feel like i'm weighing down the team and then sometimes i even do better than chris it depends yeah. But when I play with the two guys I played with yesterday, I just don't feel like trying, but I get mad that I'm not trying. <laughs> so, like, we're fucking losing. It's just the worst. We played, like, three games, and every game turned out to be bad. That sucks. And they were all infuriating, and it's just like, God fucking damn it. Like, I just couldn't win. I just played really badly. So I stopped playing that. But it's, it's like, I don't want to blame them, but I think it's just the way they go in. Like, where Chris is playing to win, they're yeah. playing to play the game. But I like to win because it's a competitive game at its heart. Yeah. I, I think that's tough because, like, there's the, the question of, like, do you play the game to be the best at it or do you play the game to have your most fun with it? Yeah. Well, but the whole point of this game is if you want to play it to have fun with it, yeah. there's a separate game mode you should be playing where it is only eight rounds maximum. Everyone rushes because you get the same loadout. Mm. Where in fucking the base game, it's like like the unrated matchmaking because competitive isn't out yet. It's like... Hey, you start with a pistol, they start with a pistol. And then everything post that, like depending on you if you won the first round or you lost it, how much can you buy? It's like there's this Oh, it's a buy with. each each level thing like yeah. Counter Strike. It was yeah, exactly like Counter Strike. So like yeah, this uh, like these guys won like the last three rounds. They probably have AKs and all I can afford is a fucking SMG. So I gotta uh. like play around that. Where this one it's like I spawned in the level I have a Vandal, which is the AK. Yeah. So they have it as well. So we're all on the same playing field. Mm. So like that's the one where it's like you don't have to think. It's all about pure just doing your own shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I don't play a lot of competitive games online, so I don't really talk about them. I don't yeah. like. I don't really know what to say about them. Like, you know, it's just like don't if you want if you're going into the game to have fun. Go play the short game mode. Yeah. Because, like, if I got into a game, like, first round, and some guy's like, I'm not trying, I'm just here to have fun, I'd be like, cool, so I don't have to spend upwards of 40 minutes playing with you when I know you're not trying your best? That's great. I love that. Yeah. You might as well throw or just leave because you're not helping the team. Like, if you, or if you're good enough to the point where you're like, I'm just playing to have fun because I'm better than all of you. (laughs) Yeah. Then it's fine, but sometimes people are like, I'm just playing to have fun. I'm just going to buy the shittiest shotgun, which is actually a good shotgun. Like, everything in the game has a good gun. And I'm just yeah. going to rush and die immediately every time. It's like, what? how is this fun for you? Uh, it's like Counter-Strike, right? Like, some people just suck at that game. Yeah. Like, and, But the problem is, like... Like me. 
I well, for me, Counter-Strike. but that's the thing, right? For for the, it's funny. I think with Valorant, even though you're you're one of the good ones at it, like I think they're kind of like you in no. Counter. Okay, I think I think it's like a Counter Strike situation where it's like people buy that game because like well, it's, it's supposed to be good. People downloaded the game. It's a free to play game. Oh, okay. It has brutal microtransactions though. Okay, so anyway, you get you get your Counter Strike. Yeah. Right, and you're like, cool. I want to play this first person shooter, and it's like hard and shitty and you're like well i'm just gonna play it like i don't like there's a million meta things to look up and i don't want to deal with that because that's not fun and so it's like i'm just gonna try to play counter-strike and i'll do what i can and i'll take what kills i can get but i don't want to have to look shit up i don't want to i want to be able to experience it and enjoy it on my terms the meta with counter-strike though is at least a little like because all it is is guns versus guns yeah so it's like oh what's the meta it's like well you buy an ak-47 you need to buy armor that's the meta. And then there's the advanced meta where you learn about smokes and stuff, but that you don't need to necessarily know. Like it help it's hmm. going to help you. Yeah. And okay. It's going to stall the enemy team, but like you don't need it. Or whatever, or just like you just need to get Im- impractically good in yeah. that game. Where it's like, like Rainbow Six Siege and Overwatch, it's like you got to know what every single fucking character does. Cause they I guess have yeah, Siege is, Siege is the thing. So yeah. it's like it's like I want to pick the fucking operator that I want, and I like playing as that one, and I can do okay at it. Like, also with whatever. Valorant and CS:GO, you're out of sight. There's three entryways to the site. That's the only fucking way they can get in. Yeah, Rainbow Six, there <laughs> is. Break walls, there break windows. There is wooden walls all around you. You didn't have enough to cover all of them. So not only are you watching the doorway that can be broken down easily, you also have to make sure they don't bust a hole through the wall and come and fuck you up. Yeah. So. Um, but anyway, so it's like it's like the kind of person who's like, yeah, man, I'm going to play the game and I'm going to play the operators that I want to play and I'm going to like, you know, do my best, but I'm going to fucking That's another play. one. It's just like Rainbow Six and Overwatch. It's one of those games. Or actually, I think every game with characters does this now. Yeah. You can't pick the same character someone else picked. Okay. Uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say is the well, people pay, playing ba- Valorant that but, sucks but so are I'm just saying, trying to play the game. There's people who will like insta-lock like the new character and then people will be like, oh, well, I'm not going to play then. Oh. But I'm what I'm saying is... ruin your time. Like, what I mean is like people will just... If the game's like something that's not their vibe or they only like it in a certain way... Yeah. Uh, like people who play those types of games will just keep playing it and be shitty and just keep being shitty and like maybe try it a bit better but whatever and like whereas me i'm like oh the way this game is played isn't the way i like it well i guess i don't like this game oh i guess i won't play this game (laughs) or yeah i just won't play it like i'm like you know oh cool um like i don't like how call of duty plays so i don't buy it yeah i'm not gonna go play the game and then ruin everyone else's good time yeah it's like you know um breath of the wild it's very, in a lot of ways, it is the kind of game I would like, but there are like three or four features that make me go, oh, this game is pee-pee-poo-poo trash garbage. <laughs> Wait, what are the so, features? Uh, stamina is, bar. Oh, uh, yeah, not great. Uh, puzzle dungeons. Eh. I, no, like the the, the shrines. That's fine. That's your opinion on that one. There's I, too many, and I don't think they're very good. Um, correct. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and um, I think they should breakable weapons. Half. That is the worst. I hate that shit more than anything in the world, especially since they're not repairable. Especially because I don't really like the combat in that game. Yeah, the combat is very much like we're Dark Souls. No, you're not. Yeah, that's what I don't. Li- I'm like, just fucking. It's Zelda. Yeah, like it's Zelda. Also, if like you're it's, fucking, it's supposed to be a game where you can kill people in three hits. It's a fucking Nintendo gonna, game. If you're gonna put a parry button, give me. Oh, wait, there is a dodge button. It's your yeah, jump button. Yeah, there's a dodge button. Yeah, but yeah. when you're locked on, it's a little short hops. God, would like a roll, like, you know, the classic Zelda roll yeah. to avoid. I like that much more because it just feels right. Yeah. There's like little things about that entire game that's like, like those things aren't big enough reasons for me to stop. Like, See, I'm in my opinion, with all the shrines. So like, for me, I'm like, bitch. I'm like, if, if, okay, straight up, if they didn't have the breakable weapons, I think I could I could stomach the other three things I don't like yeah. about it. What about okay? What if like, the weapons? At, what if the weapons would break, but you could repair them? Um, it'd still be kind of annoying. Okay, like I've played games that have breakable weapons that like I I don't mind, but it's because like. Like with Zelda, I'm, the problem is like there are areas with really tough enemies, and it's like, oh, I'm supposed to go anywhere, but like. I have poopy shit weapons yeah. and they're going to break. And it's like, okay, so where can I go? And like, why does hang gliding deplete stamina? 
Why do well, I have you're to? Holding on to it, it's like you know. Yeah, it's I a know. Physical but, exertion. Yeah, but it's like it's it doesn't feel like it should because in other games it why doesn't. Why does why why does like, run it? I understand that it's running depletes stamina, but dear God, this is annoying. It's yeah, and it depletes so fast, and I have to be able to pick between getting more hand health. Gliding, it doesn't deplete fast. Yeah. But it's like, oh, you have to make choices between health and ha- and and uh, stamina. But then the more health you can get, uh, you need a certain amount of health to get the master sword. 13. And the master sword doesn't break. And it's like, but yes, it does. It does. The master sword runs out of energy. Oh, that's fucking dumb. Because they didn't want you to give a a weapon that's overpowered. But here's the funny thing. What? The master sword's not even the one of the better swords in the game you can get. It does thirty damage. But when you're inside of like one of the like the beasts or in yeah. the Hyrule Castle, it's unlimited and the damage is doubled. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or wait, no, maybe just the damage is doubled. But then they put out a DLC where you could do these three different trials. Yeah. And you get a stronger Master Sword. Okay. Uh, they're they're fine on normal mode. On hero mode, I want it to fucking blow my brains out. Because and here, you don't like Red Zelda. What? You don't like Red Zelda. Red Zelda. Oh, that's Master Mode. Okay, so I can't. It's remember. red. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> it makes it makes all the the like you know when it loads in. Yeah, it makes it all red. I think that's the one I was playing on because okay. it's one where when you be if you don't kill an enemy fast enough or do damage to them in a while, their health starts to regenerate. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, master mode. Yeah, and then in ma- in one of the master trials in master mode, there's like you don't you get like you don't get armor. You come in naked. You had to scrounge for your weapons. That's and your royale. weapons break. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but so one of them is you have to beat up these uh, Lizalfos. Yeah. They're the lizard guys who can spit water at you and shit. But so what you do is you attack while you're attacking them with the weapon. They can when if you hit them too many times on the third hit you will always ragdoll them away. There is no wall to bounce them off of. They have more health. You have to go through like every weapon you have to beat them. But then when you hit them too far, they fly off into the water. And by the time they'll sit in the water and start trying to snipe you until you get out of their range of vision. Yeah. You don't have enough arrows to deal with them in the water and they get like 75% of their health back. Like, So what you're supposed to do with that is you're supposed to do the one, two, pause, one, two, pause, one, two, pause. Yeah. But it's not fun. Yeah. It is like the entirety of Master Mode. Again, I really love Breath of the Wild. I think there's a lot of things about that game that I think I'd really like. But the like, I like the aesthetic. I I like, you know, the world in a in a lot of ways. Like what I've seen, I'm like, oh, I didn't even get to experience this because I got just burnt out of the game like ten hours in. Yeah. Like I got off the Great Plateau. I ran around. I went the wrong way around to get fucking to Kakariko Village. You it really you really did don't you, have to go to Kakariko. Did you first. go to? I beelined it when I played. Well, did you go the, the wrong way around? Uh, no. Maybe. Because I okay. did miss some stuff. Because I climbed up a big mountain and flew in because I couldn't find the path. I fucking did something similar to that, but on top of that big mountain was a guardian. <laughs> oh. So, you know, like the fucking dudes who, like, shoot lasers at you? Yeah. So I had to go and backtrack <laughs> and find a different way in. I didn't even realize you could kill those things the first, when I first played it. Mm. Um, but oh yeah, like there's just so, so many things. Like, there's a bunch of other little things that bug me. But again, it wouldn't have been. They all piled up on each other, and it's like if even one of the bigger things I don't like about the game was changed, I could forgive the other things. And I yeah, probably would have beaten that they're it. They're all for like it's, stamina bar. I don't like it. Stamina I can bar forgive annoying because a lot for- of games have it. Yeah, uh, breakable weapons annoying. annoying. I could forgive it. Yeah. Uh, fucking. A lot of kind of shitty puzzles. Annoying, but I could forgive it. Yeah, especially right? since you don't actually have to do all of them. No. They're just a bonus to you to do them. And the puzzles, they're more physics-based things, I find. Yeah, like, I They're just, not actually hard. It's just like, oh, I got to fucking do this thing the in the one, right order. If I'm going to be honest, the one that made me quit the game the first time was the one where you have to fucking motion control the controller. And I get yep. that it's like, oh, you can just turn it upside down. And it's like, I did three but of you them. But you have to I did turn like it upside two, down and bat it like into the right spot. Like, like I did sucks. two or three in my first playthrough. Yeah. And on my fourth one, like I tried and I tried and I tried and it just wasn't fucking I, working well, for I me. I found out with that one, I was using two Joy-Cons at the time. Oh, yeah? Well, because I had them in my hands. And then I was like... Hey, wait a minute. I wonder if only one of these has the accelerometer in it. <laughs> I was right. Only the red one has an accelerometer in it. 
or it was the one that was they were using for the most. Yeah. Yeah. So the I tr- was just using that one in one hand and just going like bah, bah, trying to like bat it into the hole. Like, but yeah. Anyway, so I'd done like two or three of those, and yeah. like just the last one I did, I was just having a million problems with, and I was like, "Fuck this game! It sucks! It's a piece of shit." I think that game has some of the best like character stuff for like everyone. Yeah, because Zelda games really only focused on the world. Previously, it's like, "Here's Link. Who's Link? Fuck you. That's who. <laughs> He's go a to Mallow Mart. He's a kid from a small town. Always." He's always yeah. from a small town in the forest, and he needs to go to Hyrule Castle for some reason. And he encounters a big bad on the way there, and kind of gets thrown. He he woke up to justice. Yeah. In Breath of the Wild, who's Link? He's the kid who he was a he was a soldier in the Royal Guard, who did yeah they who was still the reincarnation of he Link. Is, he is a reincarnation. He possesses the Triforce of Courage, and Zelda was the one who possessed the Triforce of Wisdom. Yep. And they were like, we know Ganon's coming back, so we got to prepare. So th- she was like, and she has like this journey about her trying to like discover her goddess powers and like awaken them. Because Zelda in Skyward Sword, she is a reincarnation of the the god who created the land. Hylia, right? Yes. Or, yeah, Hylia. Hylia like separated into like three beings, and, yeah. but and then another portion into a human or a Hylian. Yeah. So, and that's when the that's what they teach you about the Skyward Sword, an actual good Zelda game with bad controls. <laughs> uh I've seen a lot of Skyward Sword, and I'm not gonna say it's absolute dog trash because uh, I, I've never played it. But it just uh, it doesn't look super good. Like it doesn't look at, it doesn't look like it's a, as good as some of the other ones. And I feel like there's so many missed. Like, I, there's a whole video about it that uh, Barry Kramer made, but like. Like, why would you make the sky part of that game so ugly? I wouldn't say it's ugly. I would just say it's barren. <laughs> yeah, like you should. You need to like as if you're fucking. Also, why is there en- why is there enemies in the sky? Yeah, you were the only people. I, I get when you're in the big orb where the fucking also whale man the is. sky area isn't as cool as the one in Twilight Princess. Yeah, and actually, also the implication is that that sky area is that there was humans. Who were left up in the sky area? Yeah, that stayed up there became these fucking little chicken people. With yeah. that, despite the fact that they are look like birds and live in the sky, they can't fucking fly. <laughs> well, they're like the chickens. Yeah, they're they're quokus. So the the quokus were left yeah. up with the humans, and they started breeding. Apparently, yeah. And guess what, Ian? You know it's good because no, those those quoku people. Guess what they invented? What? They invented the best invention that in Zelda history. The cannon? The double hook shot, baby. Double hook shot. People talk shot. shit on the double hook shot, but that was really cool. It is cool. <laughs> Especially like Guess Twilight what? Twilight Princess has the best fucking bosses. Yeah, and guess what? It's also got a fucking spinning top skateboard. That one's a little stupid. That one's dope. I want to pretend I'm Superman on the spinning top, actually, and I want to shoot my dual claw shot yeah. at the Hyrule, same time. Hyrule Warriors, actually, the spinner in that game is fucking amazing. You do, they, like, all the moves you do with it are just the coolest shit in the world, and yeah. it's, like, one of Link's best weapons. Yeah. Where, like, you do this shit where you kind of just, like, do a bunch of fucking I want to see that create, shit like, come shockwaves. back. The fucking hook shot always comes back. The, a bunch of... all So many Zelda items consistently reoccur. Yeah. I Why did the spinning top not come back? Yeah, why did what? the double hook shot not come let's, back? You know what? For Breath of the Wild 2... Breath of the Wild 2... Let's get rid of... You know the scroll wheel for choosing your weapons and your bows? Yeah. Fuck that noise. Yeah. The, that scroll wheel, it's back to items. <laughs> Like, get, let me go through a spinner. Let me go through boots. Let me go through bombs. Yeah. Actually, I'm fine with keeping bombs on the... Uh, like the the thing? Yeah, yeah. The, the the Sheikah slate bombs. I think yeah. those were fine. But like... Yeah, they, I mean... Like, or give me the Master Sword and let me create other weapons. Yeah, I, wanna, I want to at least... Instead of having a million different kinds of swords and spears and whatever, like a bunch of different weapons, but no different special items that feel special. Yeah. Like, I want to have something that feels special. I want to get something that not only can allow me to access something else, a la, like, a hookshot, 
right? But also allows me to traverse the, the world because the world's so big now. And since Breath of the Wild is another, like... Like it, Breath of the Wild, you can hop on a horse and you can hop on your motorcycle. Yeah. And the motorcycle is basically the, the spinning top. Take the motorcycle away, please. That's so dumb. Also, Just it replace it with fuel. the spinning top. The motorcycle, you actually have to fuel it up. Okay, but... Okay, so how about this? Replace the motorcycle with the spinning top and you can grind. Spinning top is also a weapon. It's a weapon. Yeah, it's yeah. a weapon and a and an item, and it allows you to traverse much faster than normal. I don't. Know and where, you can grind. I don't know where Breath of the Wild takes place on the new timeline. It's the end of all three timelines. Okay, I told you that. Damn it. So I don't here that you go through fucking dungeons that because clearly they found a dungeon that they didn't know about under Hyrule. Yeah. And they found the old corpse of Ganon, being held in. It's from like the Twilight Princess Ganon, like being held in place with like the giant fucking hand. Yeah. Because that's like straight and, up, uh, that's a Twilight Princess hand. Yeah. And Link goes, find, like, hey, look, the spinning top. <laughs> no, you, you, I think you should find destroyed versions of items. Of and classic you dungeons. Go, you go to like respective blacksmiths and you can, uh, and they'll like, cheat, like give you your, like fix it up for you. Yeah. The Zora cool. were in Breath of the Wild, right? Huh? The Zora? Yeah. The fish people. Yeah, yeah, they were shit. Yeah, the fuck they're the shark most people. fuckable fish. Yeah, but what's weird is the bird people from Wind Waker, which were implied to be evolved from the Zora, are also in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but in um, in what is it? Bre- in Wind Waker, you just don't go under the ocean that much, so the Zora could just be a reclusive species. Uh, like there could be ones that went to go you'd live. Think on you would have met one? Nah. Well, the the only reason you meet a Goron is because they're tra- they traveled there. Yeah. Uh, well, there's the entire other continents on uh, in in the tw- in the Wind Waker verse. Yeah. So remember trains. Bring trains back for Breath of the Wild too. I'm trains. Gonna, I'm just gonna say that uh, Zora like it's never like Zora and Bruto can exist at the same times. It's just that the Zora there was Zora that stayed underwater, and then there was the Bruto which came up above water, and we're yeah. like, all right, time to evolve. Time to become bird people. You don't know not, how that how, how that you works. You did not comment on bringing back trains. That's why. Sure, whatever. That's why when you fucking meet the 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 Zora in this one, they're all sharks because they're more deep sea fish. Where before they were just fish people. That's an explanation. Yeah. Where's my one. angler Zora? That makes me want to fucking cry because <laughs> angler fish are horrifying. He's always around you. Oh God! It's like whenever, at last. Yeah. Whenever no, whenever you're. <laughs> or no, that fucking uh, demon in PT. Yeah. Whenever you're not looking, yeah, it's, it's behind you. Which sucks because the game has a 3D camera and you play in third person. Yeah. Yeah, a game where you go, you find like the old relics that like the previous heroes used to use. Yeah. And the Minish Cap. Like, you re- can find the Minish Cap. Remember when Capcom <gasps> made games? Ooh, I love the Minish Cap. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. It's a good one. Um, no, like you go. Capcom was like, "We'll make our link to the past." Maybe but you it's take cool. a, like items to respective like blacksmiths and shit. Like you take one to the Gorons and they make yeah. you like your iron boots or something. Yeah. Also, and then it's like, oh, with iron boots you can walk underwater. The and... cosmetic items were fine, but yeah. I don't like stat bonuses. It was like annoying. Like you, you had a defense value. Just give me yeah. a set hit rate. Like, I'm sure there was tons of people who like, oh, I like the way it works that if you, you can upgrade your armor so that you can survive more hits. It's like, nah, I just want to be Link. Like, I'll, I'm fine with, like, everyone doing different damages, but I don't want to have to be like, oh, let me take a potion or let me do this shit. Uh, I, I don't know. I disagree. I think that's that, that's what makes Breath of the Wild interesting and separate itself or out from least, other ones. Or at least make the armor stuff, like, did you ever go through the armor upgrade? Great I didn't get class. to upgrade them, but I I used I picked up a bunch of different armors and like I I'd, I'd fuck around with them and I was like oh they're... so upgrading them was like the real way you could actually get a high defense, but upgrading them sucked because you couldn't you went to one fairy, uh, one like great fairy, they would upgrade your tunic that you were wearing mm-hmm. by molesting you in the water, and then you would have to go through four of them to get it to the final level. Oh, and they're the uh, determining like what level they got your shit to determines in the order they go in. So it's not like you find the first one next to Kakariko and she's like, I'll get you to level one. Then you find the next one near the Rudo village if you went that way. Mm-hmm. No, not the... Yeah, the Rudo where she's like, I'll give it to level two. But if you went to that one, like third, she would say, I'll make it level three. And then you're probably going to find the level four one in the desert like at the end. So Yeah. Uh... 
Yeah, for Breath of the Wild 2, I'd love to see them not just settle into making it just Breath of the Wild again. I'm fine with it being an open world. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. I, I want it like to, to see so Hold on. I still want it to be a sequel to Breath of the Wild in the way that the Breath of the Wild works. I would, obviously I would like the world want. to be more recovered. Yeah. There is actually. Recovered. Did you ever do the, the, the town side I, quest? I got 10 hours in. Okay. In the northern section of the map, there is a town that you can create. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Or did you ever make it to Haddo Village or whatever the fuck? I got so I got to Kakariko and then they were like, go to the windmill place with the you know, tiny girl scientist. And That's I actually like ninety eight years old. Yeah, and then I, I went there and I <laughs> technically did that it's and not illegal. Like, uh, and I went there and I did that and she was like, oh, go get me something or whatever. And then I was doing that mission and I got bored. <laughs> and then I walked around and tried to do more shrines and then I stopped playing the game. So you know, did so you, I didn't even meet any of the great beasts or whatever. You, like did, I didn't get that far. Did you ever meet the guy in that town? He's like a very flamboyant gay man. Who yeah, he could. he's like they're about to demolish a house and you can buy it from him for like a thousand rupees and thirty bundles of wood. No, I did not get if, that far. If you go if you go through that, you buy the house from him and you upgrade it like once. He sends one of his guys to um uh like go build a town up north because that was their next contract and you can meet him up north and you can start building houses in this town and you make like this small like eight person town and you can like bring your own vendors there and shit well yeah. it's like scripted who the vendors are going to be but you can bring them there and then you end up helping that guy find a wife and it's just like really nice that like That's if, I, cool. if Breath of the Wild 2 comes out and that town is still there and maybe it's like fucking big and flourishing. Because the issue with Breath of the Wild 2 is that it's still the same Link and Zelda and they don't look that much older in the trailer. But here's the thing. You build that town super quickly. So yeah. I think builders just have magical hyper time abilities. Okay. So even if it's a year later, this and they, it's also one guy who builds all these fucking buildings. Yeah. And he does it within hours. So if the rest of the crew is there, yeah. they could so build could a small a, town in a day. Be a city. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd I'd love to see yeah the world being repaired. And also, Hyrule Castle's fucked. Yeah. Fix it up. No, don't even fix it up. Let's move it. Let's go somewhere else. Maybe because they found Ganon in the catacombs. And I want, there. I want more like little, little, you know, Nintendo Easter eggs and like crossover things. Yeah, I think it would just be cool. Is if I want to Hyrule... get Metroid's gun. That would be fun. Yeah, like just as a side thing, like you could get it post game or something. Yeah, or you could get it during the game. You just don't want to use it because it's that powerful. <laughs> Yeah, but like, so the tower in the tr in that teaser they put out all those years ago, the tower like raised up, like Hyrule yeah. Castle got raised up and a tower came. The tower could be like a new dungeon you go through to go to get to Ganon, but then the top it's just fucking destroyed. It's all a bunch of rubble, and you have like a fight upon like yeah. the collapsed tower. That would be you have a fun. fight in the rain, and both of you are shirtless. You always have a fight in the rain at the end of Zelda. Oh yeah, I guess you do. Yeah, Twilight Princess has the coolest one. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, because right. Twilight it, Princess is my favorite slash second favorite Zelda. What's your first? It's it's well it depends on how I'm feeling that day. It's either Twilight. It's always either Twilight Princess or Link to the Past. Okay, good choices. It's, for me, it's yeah. just always Twilight Princess. Yeah, like it's just like Link to the Past came first, so you gotta you know pay, it, pay yeah. it that that <laughs> when respect. They, when they remastered it uh, and put it on the Wii U, yeah, I had to play it on the Hero Mode. <laughs> Cause yeah, cause you played it on the Wii. I was a Wii kid. Yeah, I didn't have. I had a GameCube, but I didn't play it on you the didn't GameCube. Play it on the GameCube because I didn't even know it came out for the GameCube till like years later. To, yeah, because like I wasn't of the biggest Zelda fan. Like Minish Cap's like one of my favorites. Twilight Princess is one of my favorites, and I played Wind Waker. Wind Waker good. Yeah, Wind Waker good. Just I was uh, I the GameCube version is not is does like disrespects your time and gathering the Triforce pieces is really tedious. Yep, but. Uh, that's why the remake is better. Also, they give you the swift sail, which makes you yeah. not have to deal with changing the direction of the wind. Every five seconds. Yeah. yeah. It's just, hey, which way, which way is the wind going? Wherever I fucking tell it to without having to do a little dance. Yeah. Uh, wind Waker, good. Uh, I only played a little bit of that because I just never owned a console that it was on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. One other thing. Speaking of Nintendo... It's my last thing for the week. Don't worry. Uh, earlier today, I bought after Chris was telling me that it was really good. I bought Xenoblade Chronicles on my Switch, mm. the first one. You gotta tell me if that's actually good because. So I played it for about three hours. All right. And I'll tell you this: it's really good. All right, cool. How's the waifus? 
Uh, I only met one. She's all right. pretty cute. You didn't meet all of them in the first three hours? <laughs> Fuck this. He got up and walked away from the microphone. You got some carrots over there. I do. They were from dinner. Yeah, you don't want to be orange, bro? I ate a bunch of carrots. I just didn't eat all of them. <sighs> Whatever. First, there's no waifus. <laughs> and now there's carrots on the fucking table. All right. Uh, but, okay, so let me tell you the Xenoblade Chronicles. So... It does kind of open, like, it, okay. So it opens with the coolest shit, which is at the beginning of time, there were two fucking giant monsters. Like, one was mechanized and the other one was, like, bio, like you know, biological. Yeah. And they're doing a big, slow, like... It was a boom. Metal Gear Rex versus an, Ev- an Ava unit. Yeah. So it's like, they're doing a big fight. And then it's like, the the mechanical one stabs the bio, bioganic one. It's like... And like you know, the we would like human life, whatever exist lives on the the corpses of these things. And I'm like, cool. In my brain, I'm like, okay, yeah. So they fall apart and crumble, and that makes the continents. And I'm like, sick, sick, sick. And then there's like, cool, you're cool, in a war. Cool, cool, cool. And it's like, there's a war, and you got to fight these robot things with the sword. And you're like, okay, okay, uh, all right. And then it's like, jump forward. To, uh, so you do the whole war scene. You learn how to play the game. And then it's like it zooms out from the war, and you notice like the war is in this like long hallway thing. And then it zooms out, and the camera's pulling out, and it's pulling out into like this sparse world, these big giant like like pieces of land with grass and stuff. And then it keeps pulling out, and it's like, oh, where they were fighting was in the sword because the corpses are still standing up of the two things, and everybody lives on the actual mech's like body, and the war was happening on the sword that connects them. Because he stabbed the one in the stomach. I'm like, yo, this is fucking sick. Wow, it sounds like they ripped off that one episode of Futurama where Bender had a colony grow on his body. Yeah, it's like that, but like, it's awesome. And you're like, oh, fuck. And then uh, it's like, oh, there's cities and you're running around doing little RPG shit. And it's very much like, oh, you do, there's a million side quests and you're running around picking up bullshit. But the combat's fun and it's neat. Like, it's very much an MMO where you're doing auto attacks, but then you have your things you want to do are on cooldowns. Works the same in Chronicles, too, as well. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know. It's surprisingly good. It's like, it's very Final Fantasy XII, but it works. It's unlike Final Fantasy XII, it doesn't need a, the 16 times so, speed. So, just real quick, when you fucking, um, when you're fighting, with the you're only three hours in, so you might not know yet. Yeah. Does Shulk only have the one weapon? Uh, I have so Shulk does only have one. Okay, that's fine because in fucking Chronicles two, your stand, yeah, <laughs> your, your lady who exists inside the sword, she, um, y- even though, like you get other versions of her, yeah, like you get Py- you get Pyra first, then there's another one, then there's like a form that they take when they combine, but like. You can also get your shitty fucking astral chain looking stands at the same time. Okay. And it's like, why? Why would I just use Pyra? Why would you make it so that I had to use other things when I also have to manage the stands of the fucking of my so, party okay. members? I'm not sure because I don't have the sword yet. Like I'm going to get. You don't have the it. Monado. I don't have the Monado. Uh, I uh, but like other characters have a bunch of well, the other party you, members have a bunch of weapons. If you get the Monado and you have the option to like switch back to the other weapon, then it's like, oh great, there's more than that weapon. But yeah, I think it's just, like, once you get the Minato, I think you just have it, because in town, I've been able to buy weapons and stuff for my yeah. other party members, but not Shulk. Fucking Final Fantasy 16, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Let me just have my main character that I play Yeah. use one fucking weapon. That is the shit I hate the most in 15. Uh, no, I, I, I completely differ, disagree. Like, obviously, 15 is not has the best, issues. yeah, but... But, uh, no, I mean, like here's the thing in classic final fantasy you're always buying new weapons or or earning them or but stealing you, them and there's stayed, a best one yeah, but it was like cloud only uses buster swords and other great swords tifa uses gloves oh you mean you shouldn't be able to use be able to use uh every character's yeah, type of weapon like gladio should be the only guy who uses great swords and that where i can only use one-handed swords and do a bit of magic yeah or i shouldn't why i just shouldn't have to hold a gun or use or like you can't even use promptos like weird tech weapons yeah okay so and there's even a gun you can get that fucking prompto can't use and it's like why yeah i mean that's a 15 thing obviously yeah. but like i'm just saying i, I hope I they don't do, think that's a good idea and uh, i think i think if they're going for a more action focus 
as long as they program different weapons to be good. And again, they've got a guy who worked on Dragon's Dogma, yeah. where you have a million different types of weapons you that all the, feel good. The ring you got at that one mission, at it was like the it was that mission where you're by yourself and you got like, the king's ring. Yeah, yeah, the ring of the Lucy. Yeah, I think that went, that the ring should have been incorporated into his like his move set. Yeah, instead of it being a separate weapon, if you you still only have your engine blade or whatever. Well, yeah, it should have done the fucking. It, it should have done the fucking near Automata thing where it's like the ring, because the ring lets you hold a bunch of weapons at the same time, it lets you like do swings without him actually swinging his arms. Yeah. Because right? he's controlling which, it. Which you do during like boss, but when, actually when you use your, uh, when you, you activate your devil trigger, I can't remember what the fuck it's called. <laughs> yeah. When you had more of the, um, the good weapons. The, yeah. The, the king weapons. Yeah. Or when you did your fucking um, final smash with that, with the super move. You would use them like by yeah. throwing them around, like flowing. Like with all your arms twelve of them are. Yeah, doing. I think cool the coolest shit. one though is if you got your boys, they yeah. would fucking grab a weapon themselves that like matched with them, and they would go on, on the attack. I'm like that feels so fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I feel like sixteen they're gonna be smart about because fifteen was like oh it was originally versus thirteen and it was Nomura's baby and it was this huge cinematic action game yeah. that was like super high budget and there is and then some Nomura, really good cinematic action shit in the there game there is some, like a little bit but like it was originally a lot of that like look at the old versus 13 trailers and you're like holy shit yeah and then like Nomura was like oh it's all these things and then it's like oh Nomura you have to work on more Kingdom Hearts games and it's like oh okay as oh Nomura uh, you need to work on Final Fantasy 7 Remake a- a- while you're working on this and it's like okay and it's like oh he got stretched so fucking thin yeah. where it's like okay well then give it to Tabata and Tabata's like okay none of this is usable because none of it's final and all everything and it needs to be out in the year 2016 yeah or so else we're like, gonna go under <laughs> Or else we're just fucked. And it's like, okay, yeah. let's throw out everything and just basic building blocks this game up from nothing in yeah. two years. And it's like, okay. And then they're like, okay, we're going to do post support. Also, a real cool thing they could do in 16 is, uh, one, when I change a character, let me change my fucking character outside of battle. Because it's always really stupid when it's like, I was playing Tifa in the middle of the fight, and all of a sudden I'm just back at Cloud. Especially because like, there are different parts of the story where you wind up running around and exploring as Tifa or Aerith. Yeah. Why can't I pick to explore as them always? Yeah. It's the same in 15. You can, uh, they put out an update that was like, you can actually switch between characters during battle. But theirs yeah. is more annoying because I think you had to, you couldn't do it with a D-pad. You had to like press start and go to your menu and be like, I want to play as Gladio for this fight. Yeah, I bet that was like, oh, we didn't intend for this to ever exist, but it's the a good idea. The only reason why they put it in is because you they didn't have them like the built movesets for them, and then there's the episodes. Yeah. So then they just incorporated those into the base game, so you could like switch to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because that's because that was never the intention for them to do. Because Gladio has like a like a fun like this parry uh, thing where you, if you block right when they're about to hit you, you do a like little parry, and that was nice. Yeah. Um. But yeah, OG FF7 did the same thing, but that didn't ma- that doesn't matter the same way than the new one. Like the way you're running around the map is like, of course you're cloud when you're cloud, like yeah. in the story. And then like, you know, when the story is like cloud's not there, then yeah, then you play it. Then one of the other characters is running around. But like yeah, when you're playing and like you need to go into battle and the battle is like you just start as the character that you're already starting as then it's annoying. I want them to separate fucking ATB and the mana. If they'd bring that shit back. It's going to be the same for all of them. No, I don't like it. You, I don't like the uh, act. The, they're it, not going to change it. They're ATB not going to. It's already should exists. only be for abilities. Magic for should be for magic. It well, already exists. They're not changing the game. I don't care. <laughs> they're just going to be like, here's more things and more weapons and more story. Wait, which, what we're talking about 16? In, in 7 part 2. 16, they can do whatever the fuck no, no, they want. No, no, like, 16 is going to be maybe nothing like 7 Remake. Well, if I'm saying if they do go like the, 7 Remake nobody, was regarded well, combat-wise. Yeah. No, but there's nobody on, this, uh, on the 16 team that's also on the 7 Remake team. Okay, well... Yeah, and 16's been in dev since 2018. So maybe 16 will go back to being a uh, turn-based... Or it's going to be old... action based on who they've hired, okay. but uh, that would be weird if they didn't. If yeah, it was like, oh, it's oh like, we'll get the Devil May Cry guy. It's like the respawn and fucking uh, Bioware shit. Yeah, 
Hey, Bioware, go make the massive multiplayer online shooter. Okay, I guess you guys don't have anything else for us. Hey, Respawn Entertainment. Go make a single player action RPG. Go make a single player action Star Wars RPG, which Bioware has already made like four of. <laughs> well, Bioware did Knights of the Old Republic and then they did the Mass Effect games. Oh, I thought they did more than... Uh, they, don't, they only did Knights of the Old Republic 1. And isn't that a well-regarded game? It is, yeah. And then Obsidian did too. Is that a good game? I heard it's good, but you have to mod because they didn't get... There's like an entire section of the game that... You know, they New Vegas. They got New Vegas in that one. New Vegas is a better game than Fallout 3, though. Yeah. But like you have to... Like that game's just kind of not finished because they got rushed out. Oh, well, New you Vegas is a finished it. game. No, but like you have to mod it to make that game playable. Fallout New Vegas? Or just can, can yeah, because it's like got a bunch of bugs and shit. Because like co- all Fallout games have a bunch of bugs. No, but, but you I don't mean have to like mod them to fix it. Okay. Uh, like Kodor two, like there was an entire section of the game that had to be cut, and like it's still kind of in the files. So then the mod actually restores that part of the game. Okay. So yeah. Nothing like Fallout New Vegas still. <laughs> all right. Whatever. That's like Dark Souls. Sure. Yeah, where Dark Souls came out and it was unplayable in zones because they fucked up the frame weight and the processing power. Despite the fact that there was games that looked much better and used a lot more processing power, they just didn't do it efficiently. Yeah. Like there's a fucking area where you go in, you be, you get blinded because of the bloom. Yeah. Uh, do you know what game I'm happy for? What? Uh... Well, A, I want to see what fucking WB Montreal has been working on for that Batman game that they've clearly been working on for like three, four years now and hasn't been announced officially. Is it going to be another Arkham game or... Well, it's 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 like a... It's going to be Arkham, but like not. It's going to be Court of Owls. Really? Yeah. So an open world city game where you're trying to stop the Court of Owls. I don't I can't know. I remember I didn't read all of the Court of Owls yeah. because I was reading Batgirl... Oh, Batgirl's great. But it, it was like when she dealt with the Court of Owl stuff. And you're like, oh, well, there's one issue where it's tying into a bigger story. Yeah, and uh, they were like, go read this one. I'm like, okay. And then I went and downloaded it, and I just never read it and just kept reading Batgirl until it got yeah. good. <laughs> hey, Batgirl, uh, Gail Simone's run on Bad, Batgirl, I, I'd say. Is that the one where good. she changed her outfit to be less sexy Batgirl and more... Uh, Batgirl of Burnside was the follow-up, where she's wearing like the... Like the, the leather jacket and the yeah, bright yellow Yeah, she's got the snap-on cape. And yeah, the snap-on cape is the smartest thing anyone has ever done in Listen, their Listen, I love that design. I just hate design. that book. It's not good. That's fine. I wish it was good. Oh, yeah, that design is a banger. But... The design's great. I like the art style. I like the design. I just feel like nothing that is written on that th- book is very good, and they like immediately discard the trans character from Gil Simone's run. Yeah. Uh, this snap-on clips... Because you know what's always sick? when The, 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 the design guy... for Batgirl and Harley Quinn is that design. Oh, thank God. I can't. I'm going to fucking watch that show. I like the classic. Now. I like the classic design a bit more because it's the one I Oh, like, you know what I did do this with, week yeah. that I didn't bring up? What didn't you bring up? I played through Resident Evil 3 again. Oh, yeah. Dope. I beat it in an hour 40 this time. Hell yeah. No healing items and no item box. <laughs> <laughs> Unassisted. So not that hard to do. I yeah. wanted to get it out of the way. Now I need 8,000 more points so I can get that infinite rocket launcher. <laughs> And I all I have like I can do a hardcore run on S and a standard mode on, run on S, and then you'll be able to beat the top two higher difficulties. I'm, yeah, by cheating. <laughs> and it's not cheating if it's in the game. <laughs> yeah, they um, let they let you get that in the game. Yeah, just they don't let they you do it in get, the first place. If you got an S rank on like your first run through of the game, I think you can actually afford that thing. Yeah, yeah. The first thing I bought was the classic gel outfit. I bought... Or not uh, the classic, sorry, I bought the, those the like RE1 a, Jill outfit. Yeah, I bought those, like, uh, assault coins. Oh, I didn't buy any of the coins. I was like, that's dumb. Yeah. Who cares? Oh, I bought them and I bought, like, the hip pouches. So the hip, like, Yeah, the pouches was the next thing yeah. I did. Especially since the hip pouches just kind of spawn in the overworld when you're on standard, which is nice. Yeah. Like, you don't have to box them. No, yeah, you just they they're right next to the box. Yeah, I kind of wish that's what they did with all of it, but they put every like for weapons. I get why they put it in the box, but the coins they could have like left out. Yeah. What sucks is though you can't discard like important things. Yeah. So I actually had to actively because I couldn't box anything. I had to actively avoid picking things up. Like I didn't get that big suppressor for my fucking pistol that would make it a two bar. Yeah. I put my made my shotgun a two bar because that's a good weapon. 
Yeah. Like, my final nemesis fight was just nothing but grenade launcher and shotgun. Yeah. So cool. Was, that game was fun. That, the best part about that game is the speed run ability of it. Yeah. Like, at M2, you know, on the one hand, like I, like I talked about last time we talked about that game. Yeah. Like, it's not a good remake of RE3. It's, it's a, not. Yeah. It's, but, it's good reimagining. Actually, not even because yeah. they took out things. It's like a good game that gets like it's, it's a point good across. game, but yeah, it's it's a good game and it's really fun. Yeah, and M two like it's all former platinum people and they know how to make good fun action games. The problem is it just doesn't it doesn't do for RE three what RE two did for RE two. You know? Yeah, where RE two is just a very faithful RE two is is a faithful reimagining, but it's also just straight up a fucking fantastic game that's like just incredible for every minute of it. Like every choice it makes is like impeccable almost like it's fantastic re3 is a really fun game that i've played more times than re2 but it's not it doesn't do the same and it's honestly it just doesn't leave the same impact it's just an action game it's just a, it's just a fun action game yeah and it's good i mean m2 is good people obviously it's I all former platinum up, people i hope they don't fuck up the re4 one yeah like i hope that's a good game i hope it's like i just I hope it's faithful to what people want it to be I don't know about you, Ian, but I just have rather seen uh, seen M2 make their own game and see how they can like do their own shit as a bunch of former platinum. Yeah, people. I think what they're doing that's I think they might be subtly slipping that in with the remakes. They're just being like, oh, <laughs> we're gonna do our own choices here. And but for RE4, everyone's like, don't. like don't, don't, don't. <laughs> that game's actually like the best reviewed game of all time. Yeah, like don't fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. Also, keeping the thing where if you shoot the lake like three times, you get fucking eaten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah keep that yeah keep the snakes randomly dropping eggs sometimes keep the random fucking weirdo that goes what do you buy oh yeah don't get rid of that because yeah. then if people play re4 remake and then play bayonetta they won't get the joke mm -hmm. where the guy's like where rodan goes what are you buying sorry i always wanted to say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean re4 is like I don't know. It feels like too new to get that kind of remake. You're, you, it's 15 years old. Yeah, I know, but you know what I mean. Like, uh, and there's games that are not as that are newer that get the remake status a bit faster. But regardless, I understand what you're yeah. saying because that game does hold up. Yeah, it holds up. It holds up well, and it's like no third person shooter that exists. Uh, like, like doesn't uh, owe. You RE4. actually, I think you have to mu when when you buy it on PC. I think it has classic fucking like they try and make you use the whole the keyboard for all the controls oh yeah but you can mod it that it fixes it with uh with the, mouse. the mouse yeah i think well, it's really dumb that they added motion controls into re5 on switch but they didn't for re4 even though re4 is the only one that was on wii yeah and had the motion dumb. controls and had great motion controls i think this i think the switch is fucking ripe for a bunch of wii remakes yeah like uh again they're gonna put out um, mario galaxy to, uh, yeah. i think they said i hope they remake those games together like mario galaxy one and two because i never got to play two guess what you know they won't i know they won't or give me a fucking but, dlc oh, for it or something but yeah xenoblade chronicles by the way just like for for a wii game that game's fucking gorgeous yeah yeah the areas are huge i would really like a skyward sword remake or a remaster on the switch yeah i'd love i'd love to see the ones that came out on wii u to come out on switch yeah because also joy cons Feel better than a nunchuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But also, I just... Why why did you make the playable version... The, mo the more playable version of uh, Wind Waker and the content-rich version of fucking Twilight Princess on a console I don't want? Because they were touch. trying to get people to buy that console. They should... Yeah. Uh, but uh, if the framework's there, and also that game was played with a controller, Yeah. Pu port it to Switch. Yeah, I won't. I'll probably buy Twilight Princess again. Won't buy um, Wind Waker again. Maybe on a sale. I'd probably buy Wind Waker. Yeah, well, I'd probably buy both. Like, I, I'd love they, to put them in a like, pack. Put them in a pack. Oh yeah, because they were full both price full, for a pack. They were both full price when they came out on Wii U. So put both in a pack for Wind Switch Waker, and make them full price. Wind Waker deserved the full price because that they did change a lot in yeah. that one. But I'm saying give it the Bayonetta one and two treatment. Yeah, where but Twilight Princess was like, eh, it's the same game. Yeah, the Twilight Princess up didn't change that much. Yeah. I mean, it like it, they they did the slight up res was really good. Yeah, it was the GameCube. It was just pretty much. The and I think GameCube they added new before. content to it. Like there was a new dungeon. Yes, only if you had a Wolf Link amiibo. And it's very reminiscent of a dungeon that already existed. Oh, then never mind. Who cares? Yeah. Well, like, 
you get new stuff from it, or what you could do with it is... They shouldn't could, have made the fucking Link's Awakening remake a full price game, because otherwise I would have probably bought it if it was like 20 bucks. But yeah, and I get that they had it in a fucking Game Boy game. They like did a, a bunch of new shit with it, though, where they were like, here's this whole like dungeon crawler no, thing. Where no, it, like, they didn't do a bunch of new shit. There's, they replaced the new dungeon from the color, like the G, GBC Link's Awakening DX version. Yeah. So the, the Link's Awakening G- DX had a dungeon which was like, oh, all based on being able to tell the color of things away from each other because the original version was black and white. Yeah. Uh, so then that's the that's the DX version. And then they replaced that new dungeon that they made with a dungeon maker that you use rooms that you've already encountered to build a new dungeon. And but you can get like new bottles and shit from it. You can get a couple new bottles from yeah. it. That's it. Okay, so yeah, that's stupid. It's that, not that's it's not worth like it the game launched for the Game Boy at like twenty, thirty dollars yeah. or however much a Game Boy game was. I would say like even fucking like Yakuza Kawami one. It wasn't full price. It wasn't? No, it was forty nine ninety nine. It was full here. price though, wasn't it? Kiwami two was full price. Well, yeah. Kiwami two is fucking massive though. Yeah. Well it's also like a much bigger reimagining and they could get away with it. God, every single time I think about Kiwami two, I just want to play it again. But Yeah. <laughs> but like Yakuza Kiwami was like forty dollars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yakuza I think Zero was also Zero was full price. Kiwami wasn't. I thought Zero was also discounted, but all right. Well, it got it got it went on sale a lot. But yeah, it was at launch. It was full price, whereas Kiwami at launch was less, because they were like, "Oh, try to get the people who liked this and like bring yeah. everybody new in," and then they did and have some nostalgia. Oh, so they did add sub stories into that one. Oh yeah, Kiwami. Well, Kiwami is a fucking new game. Like it's just a remake of the old one. Yeah, it, there's just. Well, did they add pocket racing into Kiwami one? Yeah. Is Pocket Fighter, Fighter like a whole new thing because of Zero? Yeah. Oh, okay. Also, the Majima Everywhere system. Majima Everywhere is new. Uh, the way you do upgrades is new. The combat's from Zero, like it's new. Yeah. Um. The obviously the visuals and everything is new. I did There's a bunch not, of new side stories. I did not know what Kiryu looked like in the original one. He looks like a fucking like the Hulk. He like is just wide as fuck, like running like this. Yeah, like I mean, fixed camera streets of Camarocho. Yeah, but like, you know, it was also weird. I it was a guy doing a breakdown of like the Kiwami versus the original versus Kiwami. Yeah, and he was like, I don't know why when you're in the streets it's fixed camera because when you get in a fight on the street it's free camera. Yeah, um, I think it was to control uh the like the the people you would see. Yeah, that's yeah. probably it. But uh, yeah, three was the first one that had like normal, what we would call normal camera angle. Yeah, um, and that's why it just feels bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, the original two Yakuza games, like especially two versus Kiwami two, you can make a massive argument as to why Kiwami two fails as a remake in some in a lot of ways. I wouldn't. Did you play the original? Nope. <laughs> no, then there you go. But I like, just think Kwame 2 feels really good. Kwame 2 is great, but like classic fans go like, uh, you know, the people who've been there the whole time are like, wait, why did they cut this entire city? Like, there's a, there's a 10 minute... Ch- I, I said this on the podcast before, but like... Oh yeah, because it's Sotenbori, Kamarocho, and then another city, There's a right? third one in the original Yakuza 2 and they cut it. But how, but how essential was it? You said it's a ten minute section. It's so not. It's like maybe like an hour. It's they they've moved that part to take place in one of the other cities in the, in the in the remake. Salt and Bori. Yeah, but yeah. also I think like I don't know somebody who knows better. They added in the clan creator, but, which is if you like that sort of shit, it's like okay. But and then they also got the uh, yeah, they brought the host clan, mini game from they, Yakuza Zero. They brought clan creator back from uh from six, and then they brought uh. Yeah, the other thing from uh, Zero. Yeah. And then they were like, Majima Story, that's a sequel to Zero. Oh, which sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's not even that fun. Yeah. Also, it, it kind of it disrespects the Yakuza characters from 4. four. Yeah. yeah. That's it, what I told you when that game came out. I was like, uh, he, I was like, spoiler alert, Ian, but uh, between Zero and Two, Majima got married and divorced. Yeah, <laughs> and he, the only reason he got why divorced he st- was to help his wife's career. He yeah. still loved her. Yeah, and I was, so I was like, why does he still want to have these feelings about Makoto? And it's like, oh, because most people haven't played four. Oh, that also making, because it me. was like from in, from their perspective, it's like there's zero, one, and two. Yeah, three, four, and five. 
were not out yet. But Zero has references to and four. PS4. Zero gives a shit about making uh, things up to four. Yeah. I, you know what? I would like the the upgrade system for Zero and One. Yeah. To come back. Well, not the money, but like you know the wheel where you just put points into it. I don't really like the you know getting your little fucking tokens. That you can mm. pump into. Shit. I'll take. I take either. I just. I prefer. I, you know what? One. I don't mind the one from. I know a lot of people were pissed off about it. I don't mind the one from Kwame Two and Six, where you have I, four I different kinds of it. XP. I don't hate what the four different kinds of XP. It's like from, six. Six different. It's kinds six of different. XP. Kind, whatever. I thought. I think it's fine. Like I don't hate it, but I had just. I had like. I don't mind through. keeping with that one. If okay. I if we had to pick one, like I I prefer the classic style. I personally. don't like the ones in three, four, and five. I, okay. Because you can actually miss moves from them. Or no, uh, from three. Because just three, three had yeah. it was like you could... It three was like, you could miss you moves choose from. one or this one. It's like, well, fuck. The four and five... I prefer the four and five ones where you can't really miss them, but they're just in a list and you grab it. You get skill points yeah. and you just pick it. Because it's basically just Devil May Cry at that point. Yeah. But uh, I, that's my favorite. But the four different kinds of XP, I'm like, this is kind of a neat thing. If it was only four different kinds of XP, then I'd give it to you. But six. it's six and two of them are just like much harder to get. Like, you had yeah. to get charm for a bunch of the, like, your skill ones, and charm only comes from doing, like, sub-stories or, like, doing completion shit list shit. Eating certain things. Yeah. I don't like the one in Judgment. Isn't um, it just the same? It It's SP, so it's, like, points that you have to put in, and, like, the it's just, it's annoying. I don't remember having any trouble with it. Oh, well, like, I was trying to fin it. Well, I played that game a lot more than you did, and I was, like, sure did. every friends I was. And then I got to a lady where I'm like, you got to play Mahjong. And I was like, I want to fucking die. <laughs> no, I'll never talk to you again, miss. Well, I kind of have to. But I got, like, sub-stories that I never finished, and I didn't go date all the girls. Yeah, I dated a couple of girls. I, like, that's the thing with Yakuza. There's such a wealth of content. Yeah. And, like... It's not that it's bad even, but it's just so much where you're like, well, I'm glad I don't have to see all of it, even also, though a lot like, of it's good. Yagi, I'm sure I'm missing good shit, but it's Yagi just there's too like much. like 35. Yeah. And like every girl you date in Yakuza. Is like 18. Uh, in Judgment. Yeah. There's actually one girl who is 18. There's another girl who's 19. Then you meet like this business woman who's like 24. Yeah. Because if she's 25, she's too old. And then the fortune teller, I never found out how old she was. I don't think she has an age. Well, I'm sure if I looked it up, there is an age because they have. It. I could also find out her blood type. <laughs> yeah, every Japanese game has that. Yeah. Anyway, we've gone on a really long time again. Yeah, as for, have all of the ones where we sit together recently. Uh, as are all the ones where we say, "God damn, we don't have any news." I don't know. Let's talk about video games. We've talked about a million times already. <laughs> yep. Uh, so thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Uh, please go and donate to the charity of your choice for you know Black Lives Matter stuff. Yeah. But after you do that, why don't you um, you know give us a like, give us a comment, yeah, especially and then if after you're on you do YouTube. that, go read One Piece. Sub subscribe uh, to our YouTube, youtubecom slash n 8 comedy, where there are up uh, there is an upcoming uh, episode of the breakdown. You're going to come out eventually. Uh, on top of that, you could follow us on uh, social media. So on Twitter at the Media Hole. Uh, TikTok at the media hole. Uh, what? Twitch, the, the TikTok one. It's always twitch.tv like, slash the media hole. And finally, when your balls get stuck to your leg.tumblr.com. Change your name. Uh, and you can find Ian on every social media app uh, at Struggles V. Yeah, you can find me on Tumblr reposting about One Piece. Find him uh, on OnlyFans taking pictures of all his cummies. Uh, yeah. No, my cum jars that I filled. Your cum jars. Yeah, I actually can fill them within like a day. So like that's... Well, you have a 24-hour live stream of your cum jars. Yeah, they're sitting on my radiator right now. Hopefully no one turns it on. Uh, <laughs> I had uh, a real bad thing that happened with my Rainbow Dash one a long time ago. That's right. That was me. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for listening, guys. See you later.